and we've got the last plane out, which was a, a Luftwaffe plane. <laughs> Uh, sorry, not Luftwaffe, Lufthansa, sorry. From the talk of the town to the whisper of the village. Counter number four, please. Breaking global sports news and the answers to questions you never even thought to ask. I think we've got a spoon for my kiwi fruit. The two mics. Just like in that film. On Talk Sport. Look at the light! The light is broken! Um, Shall we say horizontal refreshment with a uh, woman from uh, the continent of Europe? Yes, indeed, have I have. You? Yes, from yes. where? Germany. Germany. Mm. Now you said the other night you didn't think German women were very attractive. Oh no, I didn't say that. No, no. You did. Yeah, well, this is on a beach in uh, Mallorca, <laughs> so you can't really see what they look like at that time of the night. On a beach after a sixteen-hour plantation session. Face down or something? No, no, <laughs> no. But it's I had double vision at the time. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and I'm delighted to say it's time to say a very, very good morning to Mr. Mike Apoki. I don't work much for the BBC. Parry, very good morning to you. A uh, very good morning to you, Mike. Well, I don't actually, you mm. know, but when I'm. Uh, Used to. Well, yeah, well, I'm still asked, and uh, it's a question of time and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. But if you yeah. think you're going to extract from me the rates I get paid mm. for working on the Jeremy Vine show, just because yeah. Jeremy has been revealed today to be earning about three quarters of a million pounds a year. Well, he's getting an extraordinary amount of money. And he's one of the highest paid members yeah. of the BBC coterie. That's right, and therefore pro rata yeah. to spend 15 mm. minutes in his studio. Yes. I should get, like, you know, sort of... Well, you must one... be getting a few hundred quid for that. Well, I can't reveal this. I would uh, say uh, you must be. Uh, One-eighth of his uh, fee for that show. Uh-huh. Uh, well, you know, well, what can I say? Well, well I, think, I think the public needs to know, because as Gary Lineker said, there are certain things mm. which remain private. For example, yes. he was answering people on mm. Twitter saying, yes, I have been offered other jobs by other broadcasters, but mm. I've turned them down, uh, and that's as much as I'm willing to well, say. Well, he didn't turn the BT one down. He well, does that as well. I'm not speaking for Gary Lineker. What I'm just saying yeah. is what his tweet said. Yeah. And he said, but the rest is a private matter. So he's not yeah. willing to go that far. And that's fair enough. I accept his... Uh, Mind uh, you, you've got it in for Gary Lineker. I have not got you? it in for Gary Lineker. Oh, no, not at all. He blocked yeah. me because I asked him a couple of questions. That well, you know, I don't it's know not why. a good position to be in. I don't know why. He's also blocked the Two Mics account, by the way. Has he? Yeah. Oh, well... So you might want to take it up with him. me, yeah. Because, well, you know, that's not on, uh, is it? I think you, un- I think you antagonise the boy. That's know, not true. But my point is, is that, you know, I'm perfectly willing to accept that certain things can remain private. Yeah. You don't have to make everything public. If you work for a commercial organisation, like, for example, I wouldn't ask you how much you make uh, out of any commercial organisation, no. including this one. Yes. However, if you work for the public purse, mm. i.e. the BBC, yes. I think it's absolutely uh, um, um, prudent for you to reveal precisely what they pay you. You do, do you? I'll tell you mm. how much they pay me. Yeah, will you? Yeah. Yeah, OK, yeah. So, you go first. I'm No, I'm not asking you. You're not asking me? I don't know what you Don't are. you want to know? No, nah, I couldn't care less. I did a thing for BBC Scotland yes. um, a month or two ago when yeah. George Osborne became the editor yeah. of the Evening Standard. They mm. rang me up and said, would you mind coming on the breakfast show and talking to us about, you know, the Evening Standard job? Yes. And I said, absolutely no problem. I talked to them for five minutes. They gave me 67 quid. 67 quid? Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. I didn't have to get out of bed. Uh, good man. Uh, so no- now it's your turn. Well, to tell you what? To tell me how much you get from Jeremy Vine. No, I'm not interested. Well, I've just told you. Well, I didn't want to know. Well, I've been transparent about well, it. OK, you'd be transparent as you like. I couldn't so care less. So you're keeping it secret, are you? I'm not keeping anything secret. It's just that it's irrelevant. And frankly, it's not actually, irrelevant. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. You don't know what they pay you? I don't know. Do you never bill them? No, I don't. No, they come... Well, the, the money payments, just mysteriously appears in your bank account. Payments uh, are paid automatically, yes, absolutely. Well, I presume you yeah. have to pay the taxman. Of course I do, but that's all left to my accountant. He, he adds them all up at the end so of the year. So ask him, then? And pays 40% of it to the Inland Revenue. What does no, he do that for? 50% of it, actually. Why does he pay revenue? 50% of it to the Inland Revenue? Because that's... he's not a very good accountant, is no, he? No, that's the tax rate at which uh, you have to pay. Oh, 45% now, isn't no. it? 45%. So you don't, see, this is how you know that you're not paying it, because no, you don't no. know what the rate is. I do. The rate is 45%. Why are you paying 45% on freelance payments? You shouldn't. Because it's on top of everything else you earn, oh, right. it takes you above the limit of 45%, obviously. Well, that depends on what sort of how many companies you've got and what well, the network of companies is. I mean, for is. instance, for instance, I do receive small pensions from pensions taken out years and years ago, you oh, know, yeah. on, on... You uh, receive pensions? Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't need a pension. No, I know I don't, but, you know, when I went to places like the Evening Chronicle in Newcastle, yeah. unbeknown to me, yes. um, pension money was taken out of my, uh, mm. my salary. So now you're getting it all back? Well, you're not getting it all back, but you, you get a, well, a you're pension. you're 65, are you? Hey? You're not 65, are you? No, what happened was, at 50, mm. uh, somebody wrote to me and said, yeah. did you know he had a pension with oh, yeah. me? And I said, no. And they said, well, mm. you know, it's only going to pay you, like, um, 350 quid a month or something. Only 350 yeah, quid a yeah, month? Yeah, seriously, so yeah. people listening to this programme, yeah. that's all they have. 
Well, 350 anyway. quid a month. What do you so, mean only 350 quid so, a month? So I wrote back and said... Well, Man of the people. Well, what is, and you know when all the pension laws changed under George Osborne? Uh-huh. So I said, look, you know that little pension I've got that pays... And they said, yeah. I said, is there a lump sum money there available? Yeah. They said, yeah, there is now. I said, right, thanks, I'll have that. Yes. So I took it. And, but you're uh, still getting uh, remunerations, though, from, uh, yes. from something which is not a lump sum. Yes, that's right. Yes. How many pensions have you got? I've no idea. You have no idea. No, I have no idea, honestly. And um, and then you add all those up, and then you're into higher tax brackets and all that. But that's irrelevant. Nobody yeah. wants to know about anyway, that. Anyway, people would like we to don't know. Talk about money. I've been asked this question by mm. several people on Twitter. They yes. would like to know just not how much money you have or how much money you earn, mm. but how much money you get paid by the BBC. It's simple. I don't know. It's very straightforward. I've just told you. I don't know. If I did know, I'd tell you, but I don't know. Really? So uh, so there's no point in, in, in pursuing that. OK. What I do want to tell the audience uh, tonight, because it's the 100th anniversary of this event, right? 100th anniversary of what? Uh, the, t- the moment that the royal family changed their name from... Oh, from Saxon Coburg. Uh, no, Saxon Coburg Gotha. Right. We have ways of making you like the royal family. <laughs> to... Um, to Windsor. To Windsor. But it, but it might Why have been... Why do you think they chose Windsor? Well, they were going to choose Mountbatten. Right. And then they thought that Mountbatten sounded a bit Germanic as well. <laughs> so they uh, they decided to distance themselves as far as they could from the Ottoman Empire. Right, and name themselves after a soup. Uh, which was allied with Germany no? and Austria-Hungary. And, the Austro-Hungarian uh, Empire, I believe it was called. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> you know why all this happened? Because uh, people started rioting in sort of um, cities that had German populations, yes. you know. But this was the First World War, wasn't it? Yeah, it was First World War, yeah. And it was yeah. old uh, Franz Ferdinand and all Yeah, that. that's right. It was after the First World War. Yeah. That's right. I mean, it's quite smart, to be honest, of the, um, of the monarch of the day yes. to say, I think uh, because we're at war with Germany, mm. it's probably a good idea for us to change our name <laughs> from a German name. <laughs> yeah, but it, took, it shows great foresight in it, many ways. It did, but it took them like three years into the First World War to work that one out. Yes. You know, they uh, uh, are living in the Buckingham Palace. <laughs> We have been at war with Germany for three years, but we still have the German name. Now then, is it time to change this name? <laughs> Guess what? And they said, yes. Yeah, yes, we will Survey change. says. Yeah, we yeah, we will change the name. Yeah, that's but right. But why yeah. make it uh, with a W? Because they could have got it wrong as well and pronounced it Windsor. Well, they? I mean, it was named after Windsor Castle, actually. No, I because, know that, but yeah. wouldn't it have been better to choose a word that didn't have a W well, in it? Well, it, it probably would have been. As in Wehrmacht. Yeah, the, ver- <laughs> the Wehrmacht. Well, the Wehrmacht hadn't been established no. then. The Wehrmacht was established in the early 1930s yes. to be the German army. Yes, I know that. Um, I thought you were going to talk about various other uh, uh, sort of um, yeah. celebrations, well, birthdays. Well, we will in a minute. But anyway, the problem was, one of the reasons why they started changing it is because as the longer the war went on, the more anti-German rioting was happening, <laughs> right? Right. And there was a bunch of drunks in um, Leytonstone, I okay. believe it to be, you know? I didn't know Leytonstone <laughs> was around in those days. Well, it was. It was in, in uh, Leytonstone. And what happened was... Well, it, it, wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been anywhere else, I suppose. No, exactly. This bunch of drunks were very ignorant people. Yeah. They didn't didn't realise that uh, German names are quite distinctive. Yes. So they walked past a shop uh, of a tailor which had uh, what they thought was a German name above it. Oh, yeah. So they decided they smashed the shop up, right? Mm. Uh, because Shocking, that. they didn't like Prussian people. But guess what the name was across the top? What was the name? They they, they miscalculated. The name across the top mm. was Strachan. Strachan. <laughs> so in Scottish. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But it had so, a CH, so they thought they were yeah, German. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there's Strachan. Worse. Well, you know, oh, the Strachan man. Yeah. They will break the windows of yeah. his shop. A well-known Bavarian shoemaker. Yeah, that's But right, I have yeah. some trouble with these mobs, and they now inhabit Twitter, right? Yes. And uh, they are unbelievable, and they're so ignorant, most of them. And they used to yeah. go around with uh, you know, sort of torches, Going up to Dracula's castle, yeah. and that, then in this day <laughs> now they started to throw bricks at people who think they're yeah. German. Yeah. And then the paedoph- for the anti paedophile mobs that yes. used to go around and having uh, having a go at paediatricians because they thought you know, right. their office was actually a paedophile's office. Yeah, that's unbelievable right. stuff. It is unbelievable. Mm. Um, I mean, you would have thought they'd have got the message on day one of the war because on day one of the war, when war was declared. Um, the um, uh, Austrian-born, uh, this is in this country, yeah. uh, Prince Louis of Battenberg. Battenberg, right, yeah. yeah. Where, a key the cake, member where of your the, favourite cake comes yeah, from. Yeah, that's right, yeah. A key member of the royal circle um, stepped down as first sea lord. Right. 
because he was actually in charge of the the British Navy. Oh, yeah. But he was of German descent, right? How did that happen? I've, I've no that idea. That sounds like a bit of a blunder. Yeah, so as early as 1914, he was advised to step down because the German heritage was at odds with the uh, the traditions of the Royal Navy. Well, indeed. Funnily enough, speaking of the First Sea Lord, I've actually yeah. got a tweet today from the First Sea Lord, who's a member yeah. of uh, a guy by the name of Admiral Philip Jones. Is this about naming the new cruisers? Yeah, he says, yeah. tomorrow, i.e. later on today, uh, we yeah. will announce the name of the first of eight new Royal navy type 26 frigates. Yes. Check back here in the morning to find out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not the most exciting tweet in the world, is it? Well, it's exciting to know that Royal Navy get new boats. I don't think they're due to be in commission till after 2020. Yeah. In fact, I think it's near 2025. Well, so why are, they, why are they only naming one of them instead of all eight? Well, they, well, they name them in succession as they? they come out of the shipyard. Oh, OK. Now, when we got our um, 24s, which are the predecessor, 26s, okay. we were told we were getting 12. Uh-huh. And then it was said we can only afford eight. Right. We ended up with six. Oh, dear. So, so when he says we're getting eight, we'll probably well, end up with about three. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. yeah that's oh, the way it shocker. usually works. Yeah. OK, now, we've got lots to do. We've got lots to be getting on with. Nick says this. Uh, he's ch- he texted into 8, 10, 89. Yeah. Uh, if I was at the BBC, I would pay Porky not to appear. Yeah. It's what? a bit harsh, isn't it? It is a bit harsh, um, yeah. And here's one from Paul who says, oh, yes, Porky does what you get paid for, starring yeah. on Jeremy Vine's show. Cover the cost. You do have to keep paying for your car going mm. wrong all the time. Yeah. So lots of people very interested in uh, how much you get from Jeremy Vine. We'll, well continue with that theme. Uh, there is lots more to do. We will be talking about uh, uh, the golf, of course. Yes, you got that's something right. else to say? Well, well I just thought I'd, I'd conclude the oh, okay. change of the royal family name Sorry. by telling you this. It didn't help that out the outbreak of the First World War... The, our German-descended British king yes. held honorary ranks as a German field marshal <laughs> and a colonel of a number of German regiments based on the continent. Yeah, it's not great, that. Well, I mean, great, you know, putting it? the Germans in charge of the navy and the army That's right. seems a very, very bad idea indeed, Absolutely. particularly if you're just about to go to war with Germany. Anyway, yeah. uh, much more to come, and no more about the war. This is Talk Sport. The two mics, simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Talk sport, we are the two mics. Sue in Tunbridge says, what exactly does Porky get paid for? It's a mystery to the rest of us. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, well, it's my presence, I and, think, uh, which, Lizzie uh, says, which helps. Uh, good on you for coming clean, but I wouldn't bother to answer the phone for 67 quid. Yeah. Uh, well, I take the view that if somebody wants to use my services for whatever it is, yes. um, providing that it's not some ludicrous thing they want me to do, yeah. um, I will do it as long as they pay me. Yes, yeah, as long as they fact pay that you. It doesn't, it doesn't appear to be paying you very much. No. 67 quid for five minutes' work, I would say, is a pretty decent return. Absolutely. You know, uh, if you've got 67 Seven quid every time five minutes pass. Yes. You'd be doing rather well. Yeah, you? Th- you would indeed, yeah. Have you read this one out from Scott? He says, ring Jeremy Vine, uh, MG, get yeah. him on the phone and uh, get him to tell us what self styled man of the people Mike Porky Parry has paid for his, his, his pathetic performances on his show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's certainly a very good point. You know, I've just been working out, uh, you get about four grand an hour if you're getting 67 a Well, minute. there you go. That's not bad at all, is yeah, it? Uh, there's one here from CFC Taxi, oh, which yeah. says, well done, fellas, keep slaughtering TFL. That's yes. Transport for London. Well, yeah, I... well they're, not very, uh, they're not people that, uh, that taxi drivers like very no, much. No, I slaughter the... them on a daily basis. No. They turn roads into cycle superhighways. They put huge amounts of paperwork in the way of people who just want to indulge in commerce in London, which yeah. happens to be with their motor vehicle. And as for parking charges yes. and punitive charges for parking in bus lanes yeah. and, and straying into Cameras. bus lanes, they, they are of, I think, almost fascist-type um, uh, attitude towards motorists, which I object to enormously. And the black cab business, as a general rule, does yes. not like the way that they're no. allowing Uber to take uh, exactly. as many footholds as they'd like to take. Yes, that's, that's, I totally agree. Patrick says this, El Planko can't talk about you getting blocked by big ears for asking questions. Porky blocked me for doing the same. Uh, did I? Yes. Block who? Patrick, I call Patrick. Well, it must have been abusive to me. That's yeah. the only time I uh, block people, if they use foul language, which uh-huh. I cannot stand. Right. Uh, Steve the Cabby says, Porky's so rich he doesn't know what money comes in. No. Apart from Rooney Tunes, we all know what happened there. No, no, honestly, <laughs> it's not that. I'm not pompously saying, oh, you know, I don't look at my finances. Well, you but, don't need to, do you? Well how, many, well, how many people look at their bank account on a daily basis? Because I don't. Well, a lot of people who don't have much money do, because they have to be very careful that they're not going, one, overdrawn, because yeah. they get ripped off by the bank charges, yes. or two, they're not 
writing um, a cheque or drawing money out which mm. isn't going to be available to them. Yeah, but the thing is, every time you go to a cash machine, doesn't it say, do you want to know your balance? So, well, so don't technically... You just, don't you just say, oh, I haven't got enough money, I'll, I can't take yeah, any so money Yeah, so what out. do you do if you go to the cash machine yeah. in order to buy dinner yes. uh, for the way home for yeah. the wife and kids yes. and you find that you're actually overdrawn because you've unfortunately uh, had more money going out than going in? You have to do what everybody does and, yeah. and it'll involve a... Well, kill gi- some kind of a creature. No, no, it'll involve a, a gigantic um, economic crash in about 10 years' time. Mm. You use a credit card and you yeah, use it until you can't yeah, pay not, it back. Yeah, but not everybody can do that, is my well, point. Hey, listen, talking about that, mm. about the cash machine, yeah. did I tell you last night what happened to me yesterday? No. Uh, I don't mean yesterday, I mean the day before, I mean on uh, Tuesday. No, all you told me yesterday was that you were feeling unhinged, so I didn't like to put too well, much pressure on you. Well, I'm, uh, this might have been while I was unhinged. Mm. I, I went to a big Barclays bank. A big one? Yeah, a big Barclays bank, and I put my card As in. As opposed to what? A small one? Yes, as opposed to a small one. It yeah. had about it had about four hole in the wall machines. Okay. That's what I mean. A big oh, one. All right. And uh, if it's a big one, more people are queuing up. You see what I mean? Yes. Rather than a small one. Mm. And so I put my uh, card in, and then I tapped in, and you know it says, "Do you want this amount, this amount, this amount, or another amount?" Yes. Okay. Right. So I said another amount, and then he said, "How much do you want?" And I tapped in three hundred. Okay. Right. So then you know you're hearing all the whirring noise. Yes. My phone went. Right. So. As the phone went, I picked it out of my shirt pocket yeah. and I took my plastic card yeah. and then I walked away. No. Yes. Without the money. Yes. Oh, dear. And I got to... Uh, I was going to the supermarket, actually. Yeah. And uh, when I got to the supermarket, I thought, no, nah, that's funny. Where's my 300 quid? Yeah. Not there. No. Now, I didn't worry too much mm. because this has happened to me... Well, it quite... happened to me down in Battle a few a few uh, months ago, do you yeah, remember? Yeah, Exactly. But it didn't bother me because I thought, no, it's all right, they have a system. If you don't take the money out, it goes back in. It does, unless so, somebody else takes it. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, at the earliest possible convenience, yeah. which was actually the next morning because I'd forgotten about yeah. it, I had a look at the old bank account yeah. and I'm afraid somebody else took it. Really? Yes. It was did. there somebody behind you in the queue? How do you know? You never know, do you? If you're distracted, mm. I was on the phone, I yeah. walked away. Right. And somebody behind me... Who had... was it on the phone, by the way? It was, was it somebody you knew? Um, the only reason I'm asking you this question yeah. is because what if somebody was able to define what your phone number was yeah. and is running a scam whereby they wait for you to put your money in, yes. wait for you to put your card in, wait for you to punch it in, while you're waiting for the money, they call your phone. And you think they're just like 10 yards yeah. away, you mean, watching yeah. you? Well, it could have been, except the person who rang me was from Weatherspoons. Really? Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> no, seriously. And Say what? Oh, You've it, left your bag here. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, it was it was a very nice chap from Weatherspoons informing me that Weatherspoons are soon opening uh-huh. the biggest pub in this country right. called the Royal Victoria. Well, they want to make sure to get your custom down in Ramsgate. No, they asked if we wanted to come along on the opening day. All oh, right, and I I said well I, I thought it was a very nice idea, you know, and that kind of stuff. But yes. anyway, I lost my money. So somebody has you get five seconds, I think, to take the money out, and then right. it goes back in. You're right. So somebody very very quickly moved forward yeah. and, and got me three hundred. No, because this happened to me. It happened to me twice. Funnily enough, yep. within a space of about three months, because right. I was just getting distracted for one reason or another. Yeah, and the one time the money went back in, mm. but the second time it happened, somebody actually took it. Right, how so much was it? One hundred and twenty. One hundred quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very well, irritating. Well, do you know what? The last time it happened to me, mm. um, I was impressed and it restored my faith in humanity because the same thing happened and I hadn't even noticed. And then I heard a pounding noise behind me. Looked round and some rather dishevelled chap was chasing me down the street. Right. And I thought, what's he doing? And he stopped and he waved money at me. Uh-huh. And I, he said, this is yours. That was very said, honest of it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was fantastic. I said, what do you mean? He said, you left it in the machine. I was behind you. I said, that's incredibly kind of you. And I was stunned yeah. and he walked away. Did you not give him any back? Well, exactly. And I thought, hang on, that, that guy's been very honest. Mm. I, you need to... so, I, so I then chased him and said, here, mate, here, here, here. And I think I'd taken out 100, and I gave him uh, 20, right? which I thought was fair enough. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, because it's more than I suppose he would have expected. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the problem is yeah. that uh, once it's gone, it's gone, though, because it if gone. somebody's done you uh, yeah. and used your card or cloned your card or, or actually even falsified your, uh, your bank statement yes. and taken money out, you get that back, don't yes, you? Yes, you do, but yeah. This, in this case, you don't. It's pu- pure su- stupidity on my behalf. Well, yeah, but, I mean, it's easy to get distracted in this day and age. It is very easy. The one thing is, I think that the bank... Would would start a... You know that uh, I believe there is a CCTV camera in every machine now. There will be, yeah. To, uh, to try and avoid fraud, fraud, uh, fraudulence. Yes, fraudulent activity. Now, I suppose if I went back to that bank and said, look, this is what happened, I suppose they would start an investigation and they would find out who the person was who'd taken it by, vis- by visual. Yes. 
but they don't know who he is. They don't know who he is unless so, there's facial recognition going it, on. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, and, and to be honest, I think it's probably my fault anyway. It's not like I was smashed over the head uh, with a bottle from behind and no. somebody stole the money. I just walked no, away from it. But it is an unfortunate thing where you... Well, it's you irritating. It's, mm. it's, it's so irritating. Yeah, well, say, for example, if you were someone who couldn't afford to well, lose Well, that precisely. Quid, that'd be a lot more than irritating. Yeah, it would be a lot more It would more be potentially kind of... Really Catastrophic. Catastrophic. Yeah, it would, it would be, yeah. It could be your money for a holiday. could be money for a holiday or anything. Yeah, it could be money for the weekly shopping yes. or something like that. It right. could be tragic, you know. Yeah. But anyway, uh, now, the reason that we uh, collect, we, we started that uh, song, yes. we started this part with the song, yes, the Man, Man on, on the, the Moon, Moon, is because it is the anniversary today from 1969. Yeah. Worked that out in years. Uh-huh, 1969, That's, uh, 79, 30, 89, 31, 48. Eh? 48. Uh, something like that. 48 years yeah. since, uh, since Man stepped on the moon. Yeah. And, of course, it was Neil Armstrong who famously once mm. told you to F off. He did indeed. Yes. He did. He died recently, I think, didn't he? Not recently. Two, three years back. Two, three years back. Yeah. But also, did we not talk? Because somebody tweeted me this story today as well. Mm. Uh, did we not talk to the lady who was selling off here, the, uh, the, moon dust. the moon dust? Yeah. Which is now going to go on sale, I think, later on today. And what's it um, expected to fetch? And it's expected to fetch around about $4 million. No. Yeah. Now, where, hang on, recap. Where was this moon dust found again? This was... Is uh, it an auction? She, no, she bought it, yes. right? Because uh, I'm pretty sure we spoke to her. She bought we it did as, speak to her. as yeah. part of an auction... Mm sort of years and years and years ago, mm. but didn't really realise what it was, right? She thought it was moon dust. She mm. wanted to buy some. Mm. She bought it, I think, on the internet some years ago, and it was delivered to her house, and she thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to check with NASA to see mm. kind of where this, if it's, if it's mm. genuine moon dust. NASA started uh, investigating mm. and said, yes, not only is it genuine moon dust, it's ours. but it's ours, and That's you right. can't have it. Yeah. So they then seized it from her That's right. and said, you're not allowed to have it, uh, and this is the property yeah. of the United States government That's right. and all that. Um, and then she sued them. And won. Mm. And so now that she's sued them and won, yeah. I think her name is uh, Nancy Lee Carlson. She's right. a lawyer. Right. Uh, she won the, the right to, to now auction it for herself. Yes. And it's expected to be uh, auctioned later on today yes. at Sotheby's, mm. I think in Chicago, mm. and it could reach about $4 million. Wow. That's fantastic. So, I mean, that's better than finding 300 quid sticking out of a hole in the wall. <laughs> it certainly is indeed. Yeah, is it no. not? No, that's, uh, that's brilliant. Good luck to that lady. I like people who are uh, cashing on their luck in life. Yes. Uh, loads of messages coming in about the um, the royal family changing their name. Is it? Yes. Apparently another reason why they changed their name is because um, the mobs, you know, the drunken mobs, yeah, yeah. not only going around wrecking shops of men called Strachan, yeah. but started kicking dash huns, dash really? hounds to death. That's because, not very good. No, because dash hound, dash hound. Dash huns, the, yeah. Yes, the dash huns yeah. sounds like a German dog, so I thought we'd, we'd kill the dogs. Yeah. The the king, by the way, had mm. uh, his ceremonial German uniforms yes. in his wardrobe <laughs> in his main bedroom <laughs> because he held senior positions in the German army. That's the king That's of, uh, of England, king yeah. of Britain. Ridiculous. Unbelievable. Now, a couple of people are remarking on your uh, theft as well. Mm. Uh, Howie says this, if the money goes back into the cash point, you have to make a claim to your bank. Mm. It doesn't return automatically. That's not true, actually. No. Because uh, it happened to me, yeah. and the money did go back That's in. That's right, it shows on your statement. And when I checked the statement, the yeah. following day, yeah. it, which shows that it had gone out and gone back in. But mine did. Uh, the, the previous time when I'd done it and, and nobody had stolen it and, and it just went back in, it showed, you know, minus 200 of yeah. withdrawal and then seconds later, yeah. plus 200 uh, right. a return. Exactly. But I didn't so get So now stuff. your statement presumably just says minus 300. Yeah, unfortunately it does, yeah. Bad news. You mm. sure you didn't just take it out and spend it and you've forgotten what you did with it? No. You, I mean, that can happen sometimes if mm. you go out on a day on the bladderation <laughs> trail and you think, where did all my money go? <laughs> But this was a, within 10 minutes of me taking the money yeah, out. I couldn't, even I couldn't have spent that in Weatherspoons Paul, in that time. Paul said, well, you could have spent it in Weatherspoons in about a week. Yeah. And Paul says this, I think the call from Weatherspoons was to say, it's 7.05am, Mr Parry, mm. are you sure you're OK? Yeah. Where are you? Yeah, no, it wasn't actually. No, mm. it wasn't. No, it was a very nice chap. OK, all uh, right. Well, we've yeah. got lots more to do. Uh, we're going to talk to Mark Donaldson coming up a little bit later on the show. John Cross is going to join us from China, yeah. uh, where he's following around Arsenal as well. Uh, he'll tell us about all the various transfer stories, including this Neymar one, uh, yeah. which isn't going away. No. This is Talk Sport. Very superstitious Writings on the wall Very superstitious Letters about to fall Thirteen-month-old baby Broke the 
Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Lots more going on. Uh, we will be talking about Porky Vision a little bit later on. So I don't know what you've been watching, but uh, we'll be finding out a little bit uh, uh, a little later on down the road. That was Stevie Wonder, of course. Uh, you know that yep. he's 67 years of age. Right. Uh, he just got married for the third time. Amazing. Isn't that incredible? What an amazing guy. Uh, the headline says Stevie Wed's third Wonder Woman. Yeah. Which is not bad. Yeah. And he performed at his own wedding. He performed his own wedding. That's yeah. pretty cool, that, isn't it? Eh? I think it is. You know, I'll just step up to the piano, darling, and give us a tune. And yeah. uh, what tune would he have sung? No New Year's Day to celebrate. No April shower. Go on. To see the flowers. No Easter egg. No Easter egg. To peg. My joy at your leg. marital leg. status with me, uh, or something like that. You know what I mean? Almost certainly would have been something like that. What was that song called? Yeah, um, no New Year's Day. I just called to say I love you. I just you. called yeah. to say yeah, I love it. you. You've already murdered it, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, he's married a woman called Tomika, who he's mm. been dating for five years. They've got two children together, uh, and they're rumoured to have signed a prenuptial agreement, which yep. I suppose if you perceive you wonder, uh, you might well do. Yep. Apparently, the best man in the bridesmaid has been chosen from his nine children, mm. who are aged three to 42. Well, they chose his bride. No. Oh. The best man oh, and the, the bridesmaids oh, oh, I see. Yeah, were yeah. chosen from his wow. children. Wow, so he's, he's, uh, he's been quite prolific then in so, fathering children over the years. Well, his older child, his oldest child is 42. 42. And his youngest is three. Well, that's amazing, isn't that's it? That's great, isn't it? Amazing guy. Mm. Um, and uh, he has been blind from birth, hasn't he? Uh, well, yes, indeed he has. Yes. Uh, there are those uh, rather unkind people mm. who say... I don't think Stevie Wonder is actually blind. And there's a debate that goes on amongst some of these kind of dopey conspiracy theory yes. types who, yes. who use, for example, as one reason why they think he's blind, yes. is he wears a watch. Yeah, but, I mean, a watch... Why wouldn't you da- wear a watch? A watch is, is a part of any, you know, sort of uh, distinguished individual's attire. Yeah. I've got a story about a watch for you, actually. Well, have you seen what happens now at Wimbledon? The, the Roger Federer is one of the world's greatest sports, and obviously, yeah. but he's also a dream to sponsors. Yeah. Because he puts a Rolex watch on yeah. to his wrist yeah. the minute he sits down after victory. They all do that. Well, yeah, but do you remember one year, Andy Murray was yeah. sitting there and they he had just to won run something. And give him the yeah, right yeah, watch, didn't they? He said, where's the watch? They had no watch. Because, bef- because when they pick up the trophy, the whole idea is that you've got the distinctive watch on. That's right. That, uh, that sponsors the competition. Yeah. yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, no, here's a story. my story about the watch. Yeah. is um, I, I, it's Unusually for me, I now have two watches because my daughter bought me a second watch. Yeah, I got you one, didn't I? No, you didn't. Did I get you a watch? No. I thought I had some part in getting you a watch because I said given you, me a watch. you always had tatty watches. No, have no. I not? Oh, well, okay. I haven't, no, no, I, well, I'll tell you what, I've never seen anyone with more tatty watches than you. No, what have no. you got on tonight? Uh, I've got a, uh, what is it? A seconda. A seconda. Yeah, it's a very good watch, actually. It's not a very good watch. It's, it's not. Watch. It's a rubbish watch. No, it's What did you not. do with that watch that came in on Postman Pork? Postman you were supposed Pork. to give that away to charity, weren't you? Uh, we are going to give that away to charity. Going to? Definitely. Well, you've had about a year now. Uh, it got to get it through the charity regulatory rules. Really? Yes. It's quite a nice watch, that one. Yeah, it's quite nice, yeah. 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 No, I've got a very nice watch, which yeah. I was bought by the mother of my children. Right. Uh, and I was bought a second one uh, mm. by my daughter last year for my birthday. OK. Uh, and for some reason, over the last sort of... And mm. I kind of interchanged them, right? Yes. But for some reason, I've been wearing my daughter's watch mm. more in yes. the past week and a half. So I thought, well, I better just put the other one on today, yesterday, yes. when I was yeah. going out shopping. Put it on and noticed that it had stopped. Right. And I thought, well, that's a bit unusual. Well, it might be a chronometer. Well, I don't think it is. I mean, it's not a particularly expensive watch. I mean, it's not a cheap watch either. Yeah. But uh, so I thought, well, I'll put the time right. I'll make the time the right time. Yes. And see what happens. And got off to the supermarket, had a look at it, and it started. It had started going again. That's a chronometer. But this is not a chronometer. It's just a kind of a fashion. Let watch. Let me have a look at it, please. It's a Hugo Boss kind of fashion watch. Yeah, but I mean, I can tell you if it's a chronometer. How? Now. I'll just shake it next to my. No, ear. do not Hang shake on. my watch, please. Hang on. No, I don't want you shaking it. Hang on. No. I don't want you shaking it. Hang on. It's run by battery. I can tell you it's run by battery. Yeah, that's not a chronometer. <laughs> that's not a chronometer. Well, I could have told you that. Yeah. But how can you explain, then, the fact that I, I picked it picked it up, yes. hadn't worn it for about a week, Yes. it had stopped, Yes. I put it to the right time, mm. put it on my wrist, yeah. and it started again. It's a very cheap-looking watch, that, by the way. It it's about, it's cost about 200 quid. What, that watch? Yeah. Well, whoever paid 200 quid for that? The mother of my children bought it for me on the um, arrival of, I think, my sec- our second child. She must have been bladderated. 
Uh, well, she was bladderated for part of the yeah, operation. Yeah, exactly. I don't yeah. want to go too far, too far yeah, into that. Yeah. But no, the point is that mm. you know, it's, it's a, I'm a watch of great sentimental value. Oh, I see. I know okay, you don't. Yeah. I know you, you yeah. don't really appreciate sentiment. So yes, I do. It wouldn't mean anything to you. Yes, I but do. It means quite a lot to me. But I'm puzzled because mm. it's not a chronometer. Well, I, I have to say, why suddenly do I have some kind of magic power a, in my a, wrist? A uh, a watch with a battery should run permanently until the battery runs out. Exactly. But if you have, I don't know, you have some mixed system where the battery plus the movement of your no. wrist makes it work no. or not work. No, I don't know. It's How not, long no. have you had it? Oh, I've had it since about 2004, probably. Oh, and you've never noticed Actually, this 2002. Long... No, it's never done it before. Never done it before. Well, then I'll get it checked I out. I mean, it has... Uh, it checked out. It has... Uh, the battery has been replaced in the past. Yes, when, yes. Uh, when the watch has stopped altogether. But what has never happened is it stops, mm. I put it on my wrist, and it starts again. Yeah. Well, I think I, that's quite interesting. I, I agree. That's very odd, and I should get it checked out, OK? Yes. Absolutely right. Definitely. Now, here's a, t- a tweet from uh, Carl, mm. who says, uh, terribly sorry to ask again. I'm still waiting on information on the VIP tickets, lads. Uh, that would be the VIP tickets, of course, for our show in New York. Yes. We are attempting to fix that. We keep telling them to put more VIP, VIP tickets on, mm. uh, and they keep telling us they're going to. And if they haven't done it, I can only apologise. And we yeah. keep trying to pressure them to do yeah. it. Uh, but there's only so much we can do. But That's right. rest assured, there will be more VIP tickets available from the City Winery That's right. for our date on September the 16th. And I have some exciting news as well. Have you? Yes. What's uh, that? We're, today we have been in talks yeah. with a venue on the south coast of England okay. about doing a Christmas show in yeah. England this year. Are you sure you want to announce that now? Well, I'm not well, announcing it. I'm not announcing it. I'm trying to gauge reaction. Yeah. Um, and we've been asked to uh, to go and meet the people again yeah. for a show in the last two weeks of November. Okay. And the problem is the diary is so full now, and obviously we've got America coming up in uh, September. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure we can fit it in, but I'd like to know what the demand is from the audience. They want a live show on the South Coast. It'll be the only one in England this year. Well, of course there'll be a demand for it. So it'll be, um, you know, what I'm saying is anybody from anywhere else except the South Coast will have to travel down to see it. Uh-huh. Uh, but then it's something that we're in talks with. So I'll let you know. Def says this, a freeform jazz rendition of I Just Called to Say I Love You yeah. has made my ears bleed. Yes. Uh, like a bad smell in vocal form. Oh, dear me. That's well, a rather unpleasant uh, Matt says this. Thing to say. Unusually, I have some sympathy for Porky Ray, the 300 quid. Mm. I lost 180 pounds the same way over the Christmas period a few years back. Right. And it does wreck your life a bit because I just think what that well, chap said. It's very saying annoying. Is, well, that could have been for buying presents. It yeah. could have been for a few drinks with his mates or getting together with somebody or perhaps, you know, pushing the boat out on a special present for his wife or something like that. It is blinking irritating. Yes. I totally agree. Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, now, I've got a great tweet here from John Cross. Good morning from Shanghai. Uh, he says he's on with us shortly. Yeah, that's great. We did mention that earlier. Yeah, we did, and mm. I'm looking forward to talking to old Johnny because, I mean, you know, there's the, the money spiralling into football now is so extraordinarily uh, huge, the amounts, that it needs somebody like old Johnny to... Uh, to be explaining this to us. Indeed. You know I mean? Muad says, so you're telling mm. me if you leave money in the ATM unattended, it goes back into your account. Well, it does, providing somebody yeah. doesn't remove it. That's right. If it just sits there, it sits there for a period of time. You yep. said five seconds. It's probably slightly longer than that. Yeah, probably. Um, uh, but it gets it gets sucked back in. Yes, it does. Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, uh, and, and the... You also feel very stupid because we all work so hard for our money. Everybody works very hard for their money because, you know, you have to apply yourself to your task and all that. And then well, there's actually... a few BBC people who don't work very hard for their money. Well, I mean, that is quite extraordinary. And then to just simply give it away through carelessness, it, it's uh, it's one of the worst things you can do. Well, exactly anyway, right. Have you ever found that missing it. 12 grand yet, by the way? Yeah, the accountant knows where that is. Does he? Yes. Oh, that's good news. Because he's had some indication that the it was a, it was a bond and it's maturing. I so see. I knew that would always happen, by the way. Oh, good. So you yeah. make Making some money on it anyway. Oh, yes. yes people yes. will be glad to hear that. Yes, Phil yes. says this. Why are you still using cash, Porky? Everywhere these days has card payment facilities. Well, yes. I can't stand cash. Uh, well, you say that, but I tell you what I find completely and utterly irritating is going to a pub and seeing somebody order drink after drink after drink and just uh, sticking their card on the reader. Yeah. Because it's, what's that called? Uh, tap or something, is it? What? Well, you know when you put the card just on the reader. What, you mean uh, cashless? Cashless, yeah. Is that what you mean? Is that cashless? You mean contactless? Contactless. Contact- do you have a contact? Contactless card. I do. Do you? Yeah, I do. But I'm always worried that because my hand might tremble a bit. Why uh, does your hand? Well, you've got trembling hands now. <laughs> no, got well, in addition hands. to everything no. else that's wrong with you. No, no, eh? no. When you're holding the card. Did you see that note from Becky, by the way, last night? What was that? From uh, New Zealand, who's a medical practitioner. Yes. She says she thinks you might have diabetes. Who, me? Yeah. Why? Because of the symptoms you've been saying you've got. Yeah, well, I, I thought. Sudden weight loss, yeah. uh, blurred vision. Yes. And headaches. Yes, that's right, yeah. It's diabetes you've I, got. Well, I said that, and uh, actually, I think I better go to the doctor and check this out. You keep saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you should go. No, I will. I will. I mean, you're no, you're no use to me dead. No, you know that. no. That's absolutely true. Why don't you go tomorrow? 
Uh, I might do that. Will you? Um, I've got on tomorrow. I've got what have you got on tomorrow? tomorrow? I've got things to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like what? I've got to pick up some newly printed um, promotional material I for see. us. Okay. Uh, because, by the way, mm. uh, we haven't uh, endorsed to the audience yeah. that you are coming to the Porky Parry Scratchings Night. True. At the Well House Inn in uh, Surrey. Do you know the Well House used to be the name of my house in uh, in uh, Wiltshire? Really? It's called the Well House. Well, the one that got flooded all yeah. the time. Yeah. Oh, this one doesn't get flooded. Are you sure? Yeah, it's got a well in the back garden, but the mm. well doesn't flood the house. Well, you better be careful, yeah. because I'm never ever going to live in another place called the Well House again. It's going to be a great night. Is it? Yeah. OK, we'll see how it goes. This mm. is Talk Sport. The Two Mics. Simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Talk sport, we are uh, the two mics, and of course, uh, Porky uh, Vision coming up a little bit later on. Gareth says, can we set up a, a sweepstake to guess Porky's BBC hourly rate, well, uh, which is quite good. I would prefer if you would set up some sort of crowdfunding exercise, please, really? to reimburse me for my 300 quid that I've lost. <laughs> uh, how about this from uh, Scott? He says, I'm lost for words. Surely Porky banks with coots. Maybe he is a man of the people after all. Well, Barclays you know, he's banker. You know, can't get into that, I'm afraid. Now, uh, you know that China controls an awful lot of the money in this country and in the world. Yeah, uh, Because do. it is, of course, a massive economy. Yeah. John Cross from the Daily Mirror is out in China uh, and I'm told uh, that there's a massive uh, food poisoning bug going around in the Arsenal camp. Wow. John, a very good morning to you. Welcome. Very good morning to you, boys. Nice to be with you. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You, Terrific. Now, I'm afraid uh, that not everybody is as happy as we are to have you on. I had a tweet from somebody earlier uh, who said, oh, thank goodness John <laughs> Cross is coming on. Uh, haven't, oh, here he is. Mark, Mark has said this. Haven't heard his dulcet tones on TalkSport for at least half an hour. Yeah, exactly. Which is very harsh, that. <laughs> very harsh, yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. very, very harsh indeed. Now, I've got to say, you boys nearly, normally keep me greatly entertained driving home <laughs> uh, from no, up north or something from, yes. a, from a midweek game. So it's nice to actually be... Looking out over the, the Shanghai sunshine at the mm. airport, I'm, I'm making my way to Beijing. But I tell you what, I mean, the, 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 this bug story is, yeah. is is a strange one, isn't it? I mean, Arsene Wenger is putting it down to food poisoning, mm. but it's affected quite a, a, a few of the a, a few of the squads. Uh, Giroud, Mertesacker. I don't know. I mean, you, we, we put it a bit of an unpleasant sight, but you saw the new sign in Kalasnich. Yes, yeah. Actually, throw up on uh, actually throw up on the pitch. Walcott and Ramsey affected as well. And uh, you, you do have to wonder sometimes uh, uh, about th- these tours, whether they're really worth it yeah. and what, what the clubs get out of mm. it. I mean, uh, for a PR exercise, it's been magnificent. Arsenal really charmed everyone in Sydney and, and now in, in Shanghai. They're, they're flying to Beijing, as, as I am today. And, um, you know, but the, you've got to say, it's a football workout, boys. I just don't know whether it, whether it sort of kind of, you know, comes up to speed. The yeah. temperature and the conditions... The humidity make it so difficult, I think, to work well and effectively. Yeah, well, you'd no, have to I say you'd that. have to say it can't be the greatest preparation for the first day of the season. Flying halfway around the world no. and back. And also, don't they nowadays, John, with all the expense involved and, and the money involved, that bring their own chefs and all that sort of stuff? Well, they do actually. I, I'm not sure whether they did um, this time. I suspect they didn't, from what I gather. Yeah. Um, but they were staying at a fabulous hotel in in, in Shanghai. I went over there. It was the Mandarin Oriental, and you you kind of, you know, not pointing the finger, obviously, but you, you'd expect everything to be looked after and well catered for. My suspicion on this is, I'm sure Arsene Wenger knows what he's talking about. I cannot describe the, the kind of the heat that you get hit with. I was a, I was a week in in Sydney, uh, covering them there where they played two games. And it yeah. was like, you know, it's like a sort of kind of English autumn, really. It was, it was their winter, and it really was quite mild. And then as soon as you step off the plane, mm. it hits you with this wall of heat. And yeah. I think it's the sort of the hottest temperatures at this time of year for about, that they've had for about 10 years. Yeah. And, I, I mean, it's really taken its toll, I think. And, and that has probably got something to do with it, surely, I would yeah, argue. Yeah, I mean, Johnny, I totally agree with you. I went to Pakistan once at the height of their summer, and the minute they opened the plane door, it was like somebody had... Mike, but there's no yeah. doubt about it. Um, Lukaku was Conte's first choice striker. Yeah. I think he really thought he had him in the bag. Um, he, he was dynamic. He's not absolutely blistering pace. He's a clever player. 
but he won't. I don't think he'll sort of kind of catch the eye in the way that sort of um, Lukaku is bulldozing best. Well, well maybe, his goal he, scoring uh, record's not great, is it? Well, he's, he scored, I think, 15 goals in La Liga last year. Yeah, but, but, I mean, um, but it's about one in two and a half, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but he something? plays in the same team as Ronaldo. Yeah. You know, Ronaldo doesn't let well, very many other players score goals, does he? Yeah, go on, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with that. I, look, I, th- I think there's no doubt about it. It's an interesting one at Chelsea at the minute mm. because I do think that, that, that to not extend his contract, I mean, you, you, you read what you like into that, but my take on that is that basically Conte hasn't been particularly happy this summer. There were serious fears about his future. And I think it's almost like a compromise, a bit of piecemeal, if you, if you like, really, yeah. just to give him a pay rise, a better contract but not actually to extend it, says everything to me. Mm. And I do think that kind of Conte wasn't happy, but Chelsea weren't particularly happy with him over what happened with Diego Costa. Yeah. That, those remarks and that, that sort of shutting down Costa's career could, could actually cost them tens of millions of pounds mm. and he'll mm. be a difficult player to shift. Yeah. So it's, it's slightly disillusionment on both sides. So it'll be really interesting. Conte's talking to the press and I'll, I'll be there tomorrow for the first time since all this has all blown up. Yeah. And so it'll be really interesting to see what he says, actually. It mm. will be, yeah. The other big story that's still kind of not going away, but I'm sure can't be true, uh, is this £196 <laughs> million pounds for uh, uh, for Neymar. Matt Scott was on Talk Sport on the Sports Bar a little bit earlier on. He was saying, you've got to ask a few questions, have you not, about the whole Qatari influence on football here, where the Qataris have got you know influence over PSG, influence over Barcelona, bucket loads of money, um, and mm. these are the two teams and the one player that's involved yeah the merry-go-round is really interesting I mean with those sort of links you do wonder and money is not a, a, an issue for them can you imagine that signing though um, I mean it would be absolutely astonishing and, and I don't know what you guys think but it's almost like saying sometimes I think of name as the, the kind of poor relation in that strike force that's right um, and, and, and that sort of money for him it sort of kind of I would sort of argue third choice it is just as just an astonishing amount of money. But PSG is so ambitious. They do seem to be able to kind of, you know, in the past they've got round FFP uh, with, the, with the crazy sponsorship deals. They've been linked, of course, with Alexis Sanchez, aren't they? I'm yeah. positive there's something in that as well, by the way. Um, and, and they're just, they are determined to get a squad which is capable of winning the Champions League. They can win the French League. They didn't win it this season. They know they can do that. Though. Yeah, but that's the thing. But I mean, they went, they went backwards. I mean, they went backwards in the last year, didn't they? Yeah, and this is it. This is my take on it. They're basic. They've got to make that stellar signing. They've mm. got to make a striker signing that really says, look, we're in this. We're a European superpower here. Yeah. Take us seriously in the Champions League. Mm. And that's what I think they're aiming to do. They've got wonderful defenders and midfielders. I do think, uh, you, you know, they haven't had that kind of real stellar striker, if you like, that they've looked for um, since Latan. And I just think that this is designed, I think, as a statement signing as much as anything. And do we really think a cheque of £196 million is going to be written out? And what are the implications about the ownership rights of uh, Qatar with PSG and the money they already put into Barcelona as a sponsor? Well, the cynic in me, I would still say... I think there's always a little bit of nudging and winking sort of going on when uh, sort of Barcelona players sort of are linked with moves. Yeah. Um, does it uh, sort of kind of, is it sort of people pushing it, saying he might be available? And, and by the way, sort of kind of in the background, they're trying to negotiate new contracts. Yeah. Because this has happened time and time and time again. Yeah. Because I, I, I've got to say, Barcelona, why would you want to leave Barcelona for PSG? Mm. Not just for the football, but Barcelona's a wonderful city, as is Paris, of course. Mm. But, you know, Barcelona can be football utopia, basically, mm. when they're playing well and, and doing things. And, and I just think, unless they're looking to change things and sell Neymar and the impression I get is that that's not the case it's PSG doing the running then then I do think the cynic in me suggests that actually I find it still difficult to believe but look I mean it would just be a complete game change we're still waiting for kind of you know the, the, the 100 million pound signing mm. really let alone taking it to a whole new level like yep. this it would be remarkable yeah well I yep. mean who would have thought that Porky's prediction that you'd soon get a million pound a week football are actually coming true which it did Last week, when Lionel yeah. Messi signed uh, signed his new contract, what's what's being said at the uh, at the sort of Arsenal table at the moment? You mentioned Sanchez uh, possibly going mm. to PSG. I mean, a lot of people I hear say that Sanchez will not be at Arsenal at the start of the season. Do you share that view? Yeah, I do. Really, that 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 would be my underlying view. I mean, I just I was there obviously for the for what Wenger said this week, um, saying that he will, basically we've made a decision and we're going to keep him, and that's final. 
but I, I do think those words might come back to haunt him because he's got a year left. They, they'll have to make a financial decision. Um, and I do think it will kind of... Uh, I think it'll be a difficult one. Sanchez is a brilliant player. He's in the kind of next tier down from, from kind of your message from Ronaldo, in my view. I mean, he's an absolutely fabulous player. world-class talent. And Arsenal will be desperate to keep him. But if, he, if it's clear that he's not going to sign, I think they'll have a dilemma, especially if kind of 50, 60 million pounds is plonked on their sort of doormat, basically, and said, do you want to sign in, in the third week of August? I think it will run and run. But my feeling, gut feeling, is that Wenger might come back to, to regret those remarks, that he definitely won't go. The other interesting thing about this one is that I don't think that they will sell both Sanchez and Giroud. And mm. I think that basically if, that they will want a clear indication on Sanchez before they think about doing business on Giroud. And I think that Giroud, obviously Everton are after him. You know, Mike, he's a really good striker. Yes. I promise you that. If, if Everton get him, he, yes. he'll be top class signing. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, the, the thing is for me is that if Sanchez stays, then I do think that um, basically Giroud might be, might be surplus to requirements. But if right. Sanchez goes mm. and there's an underlying fear, I don't think that they will let both strikers go. Mm. And I think that that's something to be content with. But I mean, my take is that Sanchez will be sold. Arsenal will get Thomas Lamar done. Mm -hmm. And I think one way or another that they will keep hold of Giroud. Giroud's such a good player that they'll yeah. be low to sell him to, to Everton, who in my book have done such great business that yeah. they'll be pushing for top four and beyond this season. Exactly. Well, I don't know exactly. about that. We may hold you that one, John. Listen, thank you yep. very much indeed. Enjoy Shanghai. Uh, enjoy Beijing. Enjoy China. In mm -hmm. fact, stay away from the buffet counter by the sounds of yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, particularly in the, uh, in the departure lounge yeah. uh, because you don't really need to get yourself into any sort of food poisoning scenarios. Uh, although a couple of people are saying uh, they don't believe it. Jim says this. That Was that the Great Wall of China? Well, heat of the Plane, food poisoning, my backside, just a bunch of prima donnas who can't stand a bit of pre-season training. That well, seems a bit that, harsh. Yeah, it's very harsh. That's mm. from Jim in Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, what a load of garbage, Jim. Yeah. I mean, you've probably never left Hamilton, but believe me, when you get out there to the Middle East, the Far East, and that intense sunshine hits you with all the local customs, food-wise and otherwise, it's a challenge to the human body. It can be. Yeah, of course, of course. Talk sport. We are the two mics, and of course, uh, there will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. Yep. Uh, how about this one from Wayne? Yes. The suggestions of listography. If they made a film of your lives, the top three moments that would have to be in them. Do you uh, like that? Yeah, I quite I'd like certainly, that one. certainly. And that also, he good. says, "Who would play you?" As well, which we've talked about in the past. But we've never <laughs> yeah. done a sort of film of our lives. So no, we haven't. No. You want to do that? Uh, yeah, that, that uh, sounds good to me. So three key moments in our lives which yes. would have to be included in a biog of us. In a bi biographical movie. Yeah, biographical movie. Or biopic, okay. as some people call biopic, it. Biopic, a biopic, I yeah. I don't like calling it that. I always prefer biopic, but people tell me I'm wrong about that. Yeah, biopic. Yeah, I'll tell I, you what I nobody has come up with. Nobody's come up with a, a proper explanation as to what's going on with my watch. Uh, well, nobody can because it's a mechanical thing. They'd have to examine it. You'd have to go to jewel to examine it to find well, no, that you've got a, so. a bent shaft or well, something no, like that. I have you know not got me? a bent shaft. You thank sure? you very much indeed. Yeah? No, yeah. it works perfectly well. But what I would say mm. uh, is that the, 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 the watch is, is old enough not to have de have developed anything quirky going yes. on with it. Yeah. I just find it very odd that when it was... When was the battery last changed? Uh, a couple of years, maybe more. Well, you see, it could be a leaky battery. And, no, uh, but if the battery's failed, yeah. then why would it start again? Well, because when a battery starts to fail, it intermittently works that's and true. intermittently doesn't. That's true, but if that was the case yeah. and it was re-switched on around about 2 o'clock this afternoon, yes. surely it would be starting to lose time. Um, and it hasn't. The best thing you can do is take it to a jeweller's and well, give it to the jeweller. Of course I could take it to a jeweller's. Well, do that then. Well, Stop I'm, whinging. Well, I'm on a railway, a, a national a radio show, and yeah. I'm talking to you about it because of your interest in watching. Yeah, I thought okay. you might be interested. But, of yeah. course, I made the mistake that it was because it got nothing to do with you. No, no, no. You couldn't give a monkey. Not at all. Therefore, you'd like to move on. But no. I think people are interested in my watch yeah. and the way that it works. OK. And I'm hoping that somebody might be able to give us an explanation as to how it's happening and whether it's ever happened to them. Well, I do hope that will happen yeah. before we uh, go off out at four o'clock. Yes. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you about, <coughs> excuse me, because we are serious broadcasters, yeah. is I saw a report today on the general election. Um, uh, Mrs May would have got a majority had 400, mm. just 400, crucial votes gone her way. Yes. Because, for instance, she lost Kensington, yeah. uh, which has always been a traditional Tory seat, right. by 20 votes after yes. a recount. OK. And there were apparently 10 seats like that yeah. where they, she lost by oh, that I'm sure margin. sure that's true. So, so 20 votes the other way in mm. each one, 400 votes, yeah. would have meant she'd have got a majority. Yeah. But the other thing, which apparently was the classic error, was that when they set the date for the general election, yeah. 
Nobody knew that um, Mr Corbyn's secret plan was to mobilise youth. Yes. And particularly student towns. His idea was what, to get them to all vote twice? Well, a lot of them apparently have voted twice. But but that's not the main issue. Uh The, The main issue is... (laughs) <laughs> is is that nobody in the on the Tory side was bright enough to work out that if you had a general election when all the students had gone home from universities, yes. then the mass of 12,000 votes, which is 12,000 students at university, yeah. would dis- dissipate all across the country. Right. But as they are still at university, it's a block mm. of 12,000. Yes. And there's one seat... And they're much easier to mobilise, aren't they? Much easier to mobilise, but there's one seat, and it was one of the seats that cover Brighton and yeah. Hove, right. where a Tory candidate had a majority of just 600 votes, but was hoping to cling on by an increased majority of about 400 votes. And then when uh, Labour started to mobilise students, Mm. his 600 majority turned into a 12,000 deficit. Well, that's a big number, isn't it? 12,000 deficit is put down to 12,000 students from the University of Sussex and Brighton. They're apparently two separate universities. Well, they are, yeah. All voting for uh, for Jeremy Corbyn. It shows you how important it is to know know the business that you're in. Yeah, exactly. And to know the mechanics of it. That's right. Because a lot of people win elections not because they're a better party, but because their operations They know the mechanics, you're absolutely right. So if the students hadn't been in Brighton... This poor chap who's now pitched out and, and is jobless yeah. would probably still be an MP. Well, I don't feel sorry for him. I don't feel sorry for him yeah, either. I don't feel sorry for any politicians. Yeah, totally mm. agree. Absolutely. I yeah. must admit, I was amused by a line that I saw on Sky News a little bit earlier on in the afternoon yeah. where she gave some interview uh, in which she was talking about how, you know, the Cabinet, despite the fact that they have their differences, are very much together for the moment. Yeah. And then she's issued this ridiculous uh, ultimatum, mm. which was uh, no Cabinet Minister is unsackable. That's right. Well, why isn't the Prime Minister sackable then? Because yeah, yeah. what she's doing a useless job yeah. that somebody should sack her and replace it with somebody who knows what they're doing. But why did she need to issue that ultimatum anyway if no. she'd said a few hours earlier? Well, nobody's trying to get rid of me, no. you know. I know. Uh, now, listen, the other thing is, you've uh, you've spoke to me about your fears about these uh, moped gangs who are going around robbing people Funnily on pavements. Funny enough, I saw three of them tonight going down my road. Right. You know, because uh, they went first one way yeah. and they were very noisy, so yeah. I poked my head out the window to see mm. why there was so much mm. noise. Uh, and there was three kids on mopeds. And you think they were looking for a victim? I think they were, because they yeah. went very, very quickly in one direction, mm. and they suddenly came back the other way. Right. And as they were coming back the other way, there was a bus coming down the street, yes. which would have meant normally they would have stopped. Yes. But they didn't stop. They right. went up on a pavement, round parked cars, yeah. around the back of the bus, right. which suggested to me they were getting away from somewhere. Yeah, or trying to get away, yeah. yeah. Well, what's... And because the problem is, is that because they're so... Um, uh, sort of, I suppose, um, um, not scared at all of the consequences yes. of what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they don't stop. People can't, can't grab nope. hold of them. They just keep disappearing. But you know what's happened? Because I found this out from a criminology report, which I had access to. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it's little known that in 2015, there was a change in policy uh, amongst uh, police forces in pursuit of um, suspects. Yes. Particularly those on bikes. Mm. Uh, it means officers will not pursue potential criminals unless there is a danger to life situation, yeah. property or national security. Right. So it means that teenagers... Because uh, they're not wearing crash helmets. Because they're not wearing yeah. crash helmets. Right. Uh, teenagers move from regular reckless behaviour to criminality. Yeah. So whilst they're being a nuisance on mopeds and, and, and generally causing a nuisance, they decided then that they can get away with it. The, no pursuit, the, 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 the people on the mopeds discovered the no-pursuit policy and there's been a sea change in the way they've operated since then. It's a completely new phenomenon. Yeah. It started with youngsters doing stupid things like wheelies and tricks. Right. But then they realised the police were doing nothing to stop them. Yeah. So having got away with antisocial behaviour, it then moved to criminality. Yeah. It went from driving off rather than paying for fuel to stealing phones and now running off with people's bikes. Yeah. Within a few months, it has become an endemic across most cities. The decision has created a whole generation of nasty, brutal highwaymen men they know they will not be caught so the violence gets worse that's why we are now seeing them arm themselves with hammers and now even acid that's shocking isn't it yeah and that's, that basically tells you it's a bit like your um a theory that you used to you used to impart about the broken windows that's right in uh, the corner of a street yes and then if it doesn't get fixed suddenly that's right. there's more broken windows that's right people realize that nobody's going to stop you breaking that's in that's right suddenly the whole place turns to rack and ruin yeah and people say well that's theory it's not listen to this mm. there were 317 moped crimes across the country in 2011 yeah in the first 4 months of this year 
there have been 5,500 wow. reported. That's amazing. It has become an endemic crime. Well, it's an epidemic, isn't it? Yeah. And they're going to have to do something about it. They're yeah. going to have to do something about it because what's yeah. going to end up happening otherwise is ordinary members of the public mm. will start arming themselves with something else well, to stop themselves becoming victims. Funny enough, that same report said there are already signs of vigilante gangs yeah. of other motorcyclists yeah. Setting out to rob what yeah. these people have yeah. robbed, or people will go right. I'll tell you what, I'm going to carry around a big stick or yeah, something. That's right, pull off the bike, knock them off the bike. Yeah, a shocking state of affairs. I mean, once again, we hear the police unfortunately doing nothing. Well, we can't do anything about it. Not because they're worried about mm. their, their own problems, but yeah. because they don't want there to be an accident which will cause the death of one of these kids that's on a right. motorbike. That's right. Well, I'm sorry to sound heartless, but if you're going to go around robbing people yeah. and escaping on a high and speed carrying motorcycle, knives. carrying knives and yeah. throwing acid at people, yeah. if you fall off and you're too stupid to wear a helmet and you die, well then I'm sorry, that's one of the risks you're going to have to take. I totally agree. I uh, totally now, agree. just to go back to the football for a moment, mm. uh, I've got an interesting tweet from uh, William, uh, who's got some yes. statistics for us right. on Marata, uh, and he's got this here, from the most goals per 90 minutes, mm. I presume in La Liga uh, 2016-17 season. Yes. Most goals per 90 minutes would be no surprise to you, Lionel Messi, 1.18. Yeah. Right? That's uh, Cristiano Ronaldo comes in at 0.89. Right. Uh, Luis Suarez comes in at 0.88. Yep. But number two, in the list yeah. is Alvaro Morata with 1.01. So he's actually better than Cristiano Ronaldo at scoring goals in the 90 minutes that he's played. Well, uh, over what period of time is that, though? Well, over last season in La Liga. That means he didn't play in every really? game. Oh, I see. But in, in the, the games, games he played, yeah, but in I the, see. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. in the games yeah, he played, I, I understand, his yeah. goal-scoring ratio is marginally better than Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Well, so I, I would say he is definitely, uh, Chelsea have definitely got the better end of the deal. Well, you say that, but I mean, in, in such a small sample, you can bring up any sort of a figure, I would have thought. So um, uh, I, don't, I still don't believe it, to be honest. Um, well, I'm just giving you the statistics. What do you mean you don't believe it? I don't believe it on a long-term basis it would stick, even well, out of steam. Well, I mean, you know, that because you know, you've started using the statistic yourself. Yes. You used it last weekend when we were talking to uh, to Phil Neville, I believe. Yes. That uh, the, the Lukaku's goal ratio yeah. uh, would be exactly, you know, if, if you took all of his goals away, mm. uh, that, you know, Everton would never have lost again and still be seventh. Yeah, but that's not goals per game. That's effective, how effective the goals you score are. Yeah, well, so the goals he scores are not effective. Uh, well, you, you, you say that. Do you mm. see all that destruction in court? Cornwall, by the way, with all that rain that was coming down. The floods, yeah. God, well, terrible. more I feel amazing. So sorry for people in their little villages torn apart. You were by making water. fun of me for having a house that flooded earlier. Yeah, well, I mean that's because you were stupid enough to buy it on a, a, a floodplain. So, what do you think caused the flood? An excess of water build up behind the village. Uh, no, it was a storm. Yes, that's right. The same as these people in Cornwall. Yeah, yeah. You feel sorry for them? No, no. But you bought a house which was on a floodplain. So did they. Right. No, 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 no. The Cornish village is not a floodplain. Really? It's a village. Yeah, yeah. it's not floodplain. Well, I, I didn't live in a floodplain. I lived uh, on uh, in a village as well. Yeah, but it was on a flood plain. No, it wasn't. It no, was it wasn't. Design- the land no, your house was built on was designated flood true. plain. One, how would you know that? Yeah. Two, it's not true. Yeah, I do know. How do you know it? You've told me in the no, past. No, I've never told yes, you, you that. Have. You're just making it up as no, you go I'm not along making now. It up. I've, absolute cobleros. I've been to places like Tewkesbury and I've seen where they build Tewksbury. houses on flood plains. Yeah, well, they and have. They flood. But that's not where my house was. Yeah. My house was in an entirely different village. Yeah, you make it up as you go along, mate. No, I don't. No, I'm the one that tells the truth here. You are the liar. Oh. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Where is my mind? Where is my mind? Where is my mind? This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Got a couple of tweets here about my watch. Scott says, I have a theory about your watch. Maybe the electricity current in your body has something to do with it. Mm. As I say, just a theory. Well, mm. I don't think I've got an electricity current in my body. No, do I? I don't think you yeah, have either. Uh, Chad says, MG, Ray the watch. Has it been near any magnets or magnetic fields? Mm. Maybe a speaker or something like that. Yeah. Well, not really. I mean, no. maybe near one of my phones, possibly, yeah. which would have a speaker in it. But, it's, I mean, it's, no, it's not been anywhere where it wouldn't normally otherwise have been. No, exactly. And it's never done this before. Certainly over the last eight years, yeah. No. So, yeah. anyway, yeah. if you have any more theories, by all means, let me know. You can tweet them at the two mics. Now, we've got a call mm-hmm. uh, from Colin, who's a police officer, uh, who wants to tell us a little bit about this uh, policy of theirs. Great. Uh, not to chase these guys on mopeds because they're not wearing uh, crash helmets. Colin, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, Mike. Thank, thank you very much for, uh, for calling yeah, us. Yeah, thank you for you, joining what us. What can you tell us, Colin? Well, um, basically, what, what this policy was introduced by uh, Her Majesty Inspector uh, HMIC. You might have heard of them. They're sort of police yeah. sort of organisation headed by a man called Sir Tom Windsor. Now, he headed it. He decided that um, um, for health and safety rules, we weren't allowed to 
pursue moped drivers, as, as you've already stated for various reasons. Mm. Now, um, that policy was introduced, and most offices just got on doing what their job. But then the IPCC got involved, and they've who, been. Who are they? Uh, Independent Police Complaints Authority. Right. Anytime you got, anytime you got a complaint against police, yep. anytime there's a shooting or death or anything controversial, they investigate it. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's been happening is they were given seventy million pounds by the government to obviously prosecute police. But what's happened is that there are, they've been prosecuting police for minor breaches of that policy. Um, there's several court cases going through at this very second, and therefore most police officers will not risk their careers mm. uh, and and basically are sticking to the rules. So. And what's happened, as you see for yourself, statistics say yourself, in the last year, two years, we've had over a thousand percent increase in moped crime. Mm. Now, that's in London. Don't forget, this is a national policy. Yeah. So it affects every police force in the country. So they, the, the, the criminals are clever. They, they can do what they want and they know what they're doing. And a classic example is last Friday. You know, where they, everyone was talking about these moped thefts in North, North London. Yes. And most, most of the media concentrate on the um, acid effect. But the fact was there was five robberies in a space of 90 minutes in a, in a uh, smallish area. Mm-hmm. Now, in the old days, we would have been able to go up there, pursue him, um, take him out, arrest him, and that would be the end of it. But because of that, he was allowed to commit all of these crimes and, and do what he can, and we were not allowed to touch him. Mm. Yes, he did use acid, but the main point was what the media, most of the media don't like talking about. This is a government policy. Yeah. And the fact is, they can do wanton crime, and we can't touch it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the problem is, is, is you know, people who criticise, as we have done, mm. this particular policy. I mean, you don't necessarily always know where the policy comes from. But I mean, I can understand what you're saying as well, Colin. That the police are obviously individuals; they don't want to get themselves wrapped up into something. But I'm reading a story here that's been on uh, the Standards website, which was from Sunday, where a teenage boy died after being hit by a police car uh, while they were pursuing uh, him in Wimbledon. He was on the back of a moped. It's not clear uh, whether he was wearing a crash helmet or not. But I mean, so clearly there are some chases going on. Um, one or two. I mean, that, that, that's, that's, I think that's the first one. If you look back, that's one of the very few that's occurred in the last two years. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so the balance is, do you, what do you do? do? Do you either pursue the health and safety policy, which is mm. fine, but then you, 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 you've got a crime wave and people are going to get robbed. Jeremy Corbyn's son got robbed. Martin Lewis, the consumer expert, he got robbed. Yeah. If you're willing to live with that, that's fine. That, that, that's, that's an acceptable. Or do you accept that, yes, to clamp down on crime, you, you will have to take risks. You will have to stop these guys doing it. Mm. And sometimes it might be um, casualty. So the, the, that's a decision that needs to be made by the public, and the public needs to be made aware of that. Mm. Now, at the moment, most of the media, the newspapers, don't like reporting it because it's a government policy. I don't, think, know, it's no, no, I don't think it's that necessarily. I don't think it's that necessarily, Colin. I think they'd be more than happy to say it's a I, government, I think it's government becoming... recommendation. I mean, yeah. the problem with health and safety is that this is not about your health and safety. It's mm. about the health and safety of a bunch of criminals. Well, do, do, well, you say. Well, like you said, why did the media on Friday report everything? Did, didn't mention there was five crimes of They did actually. Yeah, yeah, they actually did. Yeah, but, I, but I, Colin, I, I you're heard, also. I, I heard that on not only on TV and radio, but yeah. I saw it written. I mean, you might have seen the, the, the acid attack was the main line because yeah. that was the most horrific. It, yeah, it's, it's absolutely horrendous. But Colin, you've got to understand now that where, the more repetitive a crime is, the less newsworthy it becomes. You know, we, we, we used to stop reporting on it because it becomes a matter of course. It was the same with muggings, you know, 30 years ago when that was all the trend. And now it's these uh, uh, guys. But shouldn't somebody in a think tank somewhere who's, you know, uh, an expert on criminology work out a way to stop these guys? I mean, you know, plain clothes officers in city centres, that sort of thing, who, you know, who, who are trained to get these people off the bikes without killing them. How? How well, shooting, exa- exactly. Shooting That's, with the well, rubber bullets. We're not criminologists, no. To carry around something like a net or something like a that. A net? Yeah, that's right, to throw that's over them work, or yeah. something like that. No, I'm telling you, you've got to think about it. You know, each time the, cr- the criminal invents a new form of crime, then the criminologists and the police and the authorities have got to invent a new way of stopping it. Well, we had a way of stopping it. We, the, the crime was down. We were, we were arresting the kids. Um, and they've taken our power away. Same with stop and search. They've taken away our power to stop and search, yeah. and that's led to a massive increase in gun crime, knife crime, violent crime. And acid crime. More people, and more young people are being murdered on the streets. And yeah. you see, unfortunately, we, we, we've lost our powers, and you see what happens when we lose our powers. Yeah, no, totally agree. And so who's Absolute pushing disgrace. back against this kind of recommendation from the government? You know, what is the, uh, the police kind of uh, union doing about it? Police Federation. 
Um, mm. I've no idea. I mean, I'm a member of the Federation. I, mean, I would hope they speak up quite loudly, but a lot of the time um, they do. They're, they're very good, but it, it, a lot of people don't want to listen to us. You know, for years we, we, we've said, look, stop and search works. No one's listened to what we've said. And unfortunately, now they've taken our powers away, you see the effect of it. So mm. we, they, they do, they're at very vocal, but whether newspapers, like you said, want to report it, want to talk about it, it's a different matter. Uh, and a lot of time they don't. They put out press releases and well, most of the time they get ignored. But the fact is, we're in a very lawless society. Kids are killing each other, stabbing each other, committing crime mm. mopeds. And something's got to be done, and we know that because we have to see it every day. We see victims of crime every day. These are robberies. You see the delivery drivers were marching through London outside Parliament yesterday um, because they're getting robbed left, right, centre. And I'm trained to protect you and, and, and stop crime, and I can't do that. Mm. It frustrates me to hell. Yeah. yeah. The fact is, and it's caused by this government and their policies, and the fact is, you're not safe on the streets. We can't protect you. Uh, and it, and it's going to get worse. But more, one day, one of these kids is going to kill somebody. Yeah. Um, or yeah, and there's nothing I can do. And it, it, and this government needs to be held to account for that. So do the IPCC, and so the Imagine Inspector who induces introduces policy, which which uh, basically given lawless crime, uh, you know, a boost. Sure. No, it's a shocking state of affairs, but as you know better than we do, Colin, if, if people aren't scared of committing crimes because the consequences right. are so, uh, sort of, you know, narrow, yeah. that they're they'll, not going to have any problem. They'll just, they, they'll just keep committing them. They'll just keep committing them. Absolutely. It's a shocking state of affairs. Colin, Colin, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Patrick yeah. says this, over an hour into the show, and Porky hasn't mentioned Everton, his journals, or the Beatles. Thank you. Get him to the doctor very soon, yeah. MG. Yeah. Well, they did mention Everton played last night when we were talking to Andy Goldstein and Jason yes, Tundee earlier. Yes, that, that was in the, uh, the what we call the uh, talker. The handover, we call it, actually. Well, we down because it wasn't a handover. Well, it's kind of a handover. No, it, it? wasn't because we walked out the studio again, and then the handover came half an hour later. I would call it. I would. I would call it a handover because it's you're you're talking ahead to the the handover that is going to happen very shortly. I would call it a talk up. No, I wouldn't because it's talking up well, the you show that's coming after like. this one. You yeah. can call it whatever you want. Yeah, uh, Johnny I says. I call you whatever I want as well. well okay, low face. Uh, you, yeah, you, you got keep, that. You keep getting, you keep getting aggressive with me, matey. No, I'm no. afraid I'll have to walk over there and do what I keep telling you I'm going to do one oh, of these yeah. days. Yeah. Uh, would Porky You'll be interested talk. in your watch battery if he had mm. the same one in his pacemaker? Says Ash. Well, that's absolutely true. Well, maybe that's what he's going to end up with. But uh, I don't have a pacemaker, so uh, you don't have to worry about maybe that. Maybe that's one. what the okay. problem is. Johnny yeah. says that's why I can't take my kids to see all the glorious history of London. It is just not safe. Well, to be honest, Johnny, in London is no more dangerous than anywhere else. No, really. of course it's not. It's the, same, it's the same in every capital city. And, mm. and look, let's get this into perspective, right? Your chances of being involved in, uh, sadly, in a terrorist incident or a street mugging and all that are, are very, very small. That's not to belittle, um, you know, the uh, horrendous uh, experience that people go through when they when they are involved in them. But fortunately, we have such a a wide society, such a mostly lawful society. Not many people get caught up in it. Well, they it. are going to have to get to grips with this business of throwing acid in people's faces. Well, it's, though. It's, it's, it's horrendous. I, mean, yeah. I just can't believe how any human being with natural human uh, emotions and thoughts mm. can throw a liquid into somebody else's face. No, yeah. you're going to blind them. Right. Uh, and, and disfigure uh, them. And disfigure them and, and cause them years of misery and a completely life-changing situation. Yeah. I'd put somebody like that away for life. Well, apparently, as far as I'm concerned, it's a life sentence crime. Well, do you know, people have been put away for life. And I mean, it's another criticism of this government. Amber Rudd gets yeah. up in the House of Commons and says, we're going to change the law to make sure that people who do this can be locked up for life. Yeah. They can already be locked up for life because the, the crime which they are committing yes. has a life sentence That's attached right. to it if the judge uh, decides that it's serious enough. That's you right. know, it's grievous bodily harm. Yeah. And the two guys, in fact, who threw acid in the face of a woman some mm. years ago mm. are serving a life sentence. Yeah. So they're not actually clamping down on it. Yeah. But obviously what they've got to do, as yeah. far as Colin is concerned, is make it more easy for the police to arrest these yeah, people. That's right. These scumbags, as and, you And then them. encourage judges to meet out the sort of justice that is required to deter others from doing it. Exactly right. Yes. Now, coming up, uh, we're going to be talking to Mark Donaldson about the golf. Mm. Uh, Rory McIlroy is apparently worried that his chances are going to be hit by the weather. Mm. Uh, and also, uh, the BBC have been slammed over their tired coverage of it. So yeah, we'll that, talk a bit about yeah, that as well. That, yeah. This is Talk Small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> TV reviewer, I can reveal yeah. there are no plans for a new series. Yeah, no, but it wasn't their previous series. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. It says here there might be a new series. <laughs> What's the problem?
That music can only mean one thing. It is, of course, time for Porky Vision. Yep. That's TV review this side of, uh, I don't know, Shanghai, where we were talking right. to John Cross from a little bit earlier on. Yes. Uh, what have you been watching, Mr. Parry? Well, I've been watching a lot of stuff. Have you? Um, it hasn't been a great uh, week for TV. A lot of things coming to an end, aren't they? A lot of things coming to an end. You're absolutely right to spot that one. That's, uh, that's definitely the case. And, uh, of course, you know, it's been a busy week. It hasn't been a lot of time around to take in a lot of the, uh, the You've stuff. You've been busy, have you? Been busy, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but some of the stuff that I have taken in has uh, been uh, quite revelatory and quite eye-opening. Yes. Uh, for instance, I saw... Um, what did I see? I saw uh, the last episode of The Lock. The Lock, yeah. Now... Dis- was that the last? Because I watched the last episode of yeah. The Lock and I can't remember for the life of me yeah. what happened. Well, what happened was it turned out that the person going around murdering everybody yeah. is, in fact, somebody who is in a coma. Hey. He's in a coma. Is he? Yeah. How does he manage to kill everyone? Then? Well, this is it's a bit of a weird one. Do you remember the uh, last episode of Broadchurch? Everybody was very disappointed mm. because at the end of the day, the merger turned out not to be one of the main characters, yeah. but some inconsequential boy. He'd only yeah. appeared very briefly in is an this earlier the la- episode. the last episode? The last yeah, one. you know, when it not involved the first G- one. Gilly Hermondalala. You know what I mean? That's her, yeah. Yeah, and uh, she was the victim. And, yes. and it turned out, and it was a very disappointing sort of flat-like end mm. because everybody said, well, you know, we forgot he was even in the show. That's right. So, um, Joanna Lumley's India was very good because you like India. I'll tell you a bit about that in a minute. I've seen a bit of that. I thought she was terrific. I'll tell you a bit about that in a minute. Now, yeah. I saw her going up as a very tall skyscraper. Yes, that's right, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that was in uh, somewhere like... Um, it was Bombay. It was in... Yeah, they don't call it Bombay anymore, do they? No. No, uh, Mumbai. 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 Yeah, Mumbai, that's right, yeah. yeah. Now, um, so, uh, also, she met the head of Tibetan bu- Buddhism. Did she? Yeah. I've the often, Dalai I've Lama? Often, no, no, Isn't that no. the Dalai Lama? No, no, she had a meeting with the Dalai, but he's uh, he's the 14th Dalai. Is he? Um, Isn't he the head of Tibetan Buddhism, then? L- well, no, uh, hang on, what's he head of? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. He lives in Lhasa, which is the capital of, um, of Tibet. Tibet. Yes. And he is the head of Tibetan uh, Buddhism. Yes, that's right. Who yeah. the Dalai Lama is. The Dalai Lama, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, Great uh, guy. Eh? Great guy. Yeah, good guy. Yeah. Now then, uh, so uh, the last episode of The Lock, right the way through The Lock, there's been like uh, a woman who spends her life looking after a son who's in a coma. Yes. Right? Yeah. But he's not in a coma. He keeps getting out of the coma, Does going he? out murdering people and then coming back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I How mean, does he get out of a coma? Well, it's, it, was, it, it, it stretched the imagination the way the plot ended. Right. But basically... Wasn't she keeping him in a coma? Well, yes, she was trying to keep him in a coma, but the point is he, he wasn't who he was. He was impersonating his brother. Was he? And his brother was impersonating him. Oh, I see. So they switched identities. You sure it wasn't his brother that was doing all the killing? Uh, yeah, it was his brother, actually, who was doing all the killing. Not the guy in the coma? No, no, but the guy in the coma was thought to be the guy who was doing the killing. You right. see what I mean? Because they swapped identities see, yeah. for some unknown reason. Mm. So the guy in the coma mm. often gets up and, and picks up objects like uh, oxygen bottles, which right. he's not really using, yeah. and smashes people over the head with them, you know, <laughs> to knock them out. Right. And this kind of stuff. OK. Where, whereas the other guy... The other guy who's pretending to be him. Who's pretending to be him. Yeah. Uh, is going around uh, blowing people away, yes. but then pretending that the people he's blown away mm. are the actual killers themselves right. who tried to kill him because he managed to get a shotgun and blow a bit of his cheek off Blimey. to make out before very violent, killing the other two. It? Yeah, very violent. Yeah, very it's violent. It's a bit like, um, you know, that Midsummer Murders where you've got this nice little idyllic place. Yes. But there's so many, everybody's getting murdered all over the place. That's right, yeah. Mm. And uh, just as a twist to all this... Um, very, another very strange bit of it is that the one of the blokes who's married to one of the police women yeah. runs a fraudulent business in which he drives this boat around on Loch Ness, yeah. saying, you know, Loch Ness monster oh, yeah. tours, mm. and gives a running commentary to stupid Japanese people. Well, they're um, all Japanese, surely. Well, a lot of them are, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of them, that uh, he first saw the monster when he was 10 years of age okay. and all this, which is right. completely fraudulent because well, he's, never, he's never seen the monster. Well, you no, know. but there's a lot of people that do that kind of thing. It's not necessarily well, fraudulent, is well, it? Well, I it's, think it is. It's known as, you know, uh, yeah. being a man of the local colour, Well, telling local colourful stories. I, I, no, I don't agree. I think to say, you know, to try and perpetuate the idea, the myth of a, a, a monster on Loch Ness when there obviously isn't one is, is so stupid. But anyway, what... Mm. Uh, 
what happens is that these two Japanese people are sitting in the back of the boat. Yes. And I think I told you in an earlier episode, he throws a camera overboard so mm. they can see the swirling depths of Loch Ness. Oh, yeah. And on one occasion, they passed the body that's tied down yes. by a, a weight from the curling... But they uh, missed it, right? Well, he missed it when right. he went to answer his phone. Yeah. But, so this is where... This particular episode, the two Japanese are sitting in the back and they start getting hel- terribly excited oh, yeah. and shouting, you know, haka, hiro, haka, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Really? And what they're trying to say to him in Japanese is, uh, there's a body floating around underneath your boat. So did they find it then? Yeah, they find it. Okay. So then they send down the police dives, they bring it up and then... Uh, this you is know, the body that's had the heart cut out. Yeah, right. and finally they get the heart out and they say, yeah, this heart fits into that body, which I wouldn't have thought was the greatest, um, you know, well, uh, I suppose it's deduction always... of uh, of police analysis ever. They find a body without a heart in Loch Ness. Yeah. On the shores of Loch Ness they find a heart. Yeah. They managed to put two and two together and came up with four. And was it actually the right heart then? Yeah, it was the right heart, so yeah. So they could identify who it was? Yeah, they identified who it was, yeah. Right. And, it and turned... who was it then? The father of the boy in the coma, for really? some unknown reason. Okay. Yeah, so it's all sort of connected. Okay. But it got so sort of strange to yeah. me that, you know. But anyway, that's... Uh, so that that's that. finished now? That's finished Is now. there going to be another one, do you think? I doubt it, because I, I, I don't think it, it was taken on that well by the audience. You really? know what I mean? Also, it turns out that the... The chief lady uh, investigating cop... Yeah, uh, the so, English one. The English one, yeah. that's absolutely right. He's come mm. from somewhere in England to, to conduct the investigation and uh, is in charge of the, you know, I th- what do they call it? In charge of the serious crime or something like Serious Crime Officer Senior or something. Yeah. Uh, she is clearly involved in, you know, horizontal refreshment techniques with the uh, criminal psychologist. Oh, really? Who turned up. OK. Turned out to be useless. Mm. Um, she then accused him of misleading her in the investigation. Right. Uh, but he then gets clobbered over the head by the guy in the coma. Uh, the guy in the coma? Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. OK. Because the guy in the coma goes to see... The, the criminal psychologist goes to see the guy in, in a coma. Yeah. And he's quite surprised when he walks in his room yeah. to find that man in coma, mm. no longer in bed. Oh, right. He's so, got up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've got this from um, uh, Becky. Yes. Now, it says, call me Dr. Picky, but the last episode of The Loft doesn't air until the 24th of July. What's Porky been watching? What? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's uh... It doesn't air until the 24th. Which well, hang is on. Next... Isn't Becky in New Zealand? Yes, she is. Well, sorry, but I well, mean, it's ended here. a week behind. Yeah, it's ended here, mm. so, you know, just get, you know, get your act together there, Becky, oh. will you please? Um, and, Scott uh, says, I'm going into a coma listening to Porky Vision. <laughs> no. Porky went for the locks of no. the Dalai Lama and yeah. back to the lock again. <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the Dalai Lama's so, such an interesting guy. But, uh, no, uh, so so criminal psychologists, you know, who, who has never solved a crime. Yes. They never do. No. Nobody, no criminal psychologist has ever solved a crime anywhere in the world. They just they talk... They might have done it in America. No, they just talk a load of absolute... Baloxios, you know, and uh, and get no. The FBI uh, profiling department yeah. in Maryland, I'm pretty sure, have used okay. profiling. To well, catch if you quite say so, I believe killers. you. But it's never happened in this country. No, I don't think. It has. I don't think it's ever happened anywhere in the world. But anyway, uh-huh. uh, so uh, so he goes into the the room where coma man should be comatized, yes. but he's not comatized, and so he gets hit over the head by a very heavy oxygen bottle, you know, which just smashes his head open. Well, by the man in the coma. By the man in the coma, yeah, <laughs> then runs off. <laughs> Uh, in his pyjamas. So you'd have thought he'd... chameleon, <laughs> by the Cobra sounds of it. Chameleon. So you'd have thought he'd been quite easy to spot, really. You know? Yeah, but, he would. Yeah, you know, particularly, you know, you've got this very remote also, town. Also, if you've been in a coma, yeah. you can't just get up and walk away. I mean, you haven't moved your legs for for the best part of yeah, three Yeah, but I think he's been kidding about the coma. I think he's been out prowling at night, you know. Yeah. So anyway, he, uh, he goes running off up and... You'd have thought that a little town on the edge of Loch Ness, you know, where there's hardly anybody lives there and they've got all this uh, countryside around... Mm. You thought some guy sprinting around in his pyjamas would be quite obvious to quite a lot of well, people. Well, you never you see some weird stuff up there in that you, part You do see some weird stuff. But anyway, the killer himself... Yeah. The killer himself... The brother. Uh, yeah, that's right. He's meanwhile involved mm. in killing the daughter of the female cop who's second in command. The Scottish woman. Uh, Sc- uh, yes. Laura Fraser. It, uh, could be Laura Fraser. Laura Fraser, the dark-haired woman. Dark-haired woman, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the one. Laura Fraser. The one who stayed in The Disappeared. Funny enough, I used to know her sister quite well. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. Mm. What was her in name? In Glasgow. Yeah? Yeah, she was friends with, because she had a kid at the same kindergarten as, as we did. And so. uh, what was her name? I can't remember. Oh, OK, but mm. Fraser's sister, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so she suddenly, for some unknown reason, 
comes to the conclusion that the killer is going to kill her daughter on the shores of uh, Loch Ness. Loch Ness, yeah. So, um, so she drives over there in right. a bit of a panic okay. to find out that he is trying to um, drown her. Is he? Yes, that's right. right. He's holding her underwater. Uh, so he is the killer? He is the killer, right. but he nearly got away with it. You don't want to give that away, I suppose, do you? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's all over now. Is it? But, but he, nearly, he, he nearly got away with it because... Yeah. She, that's the daughter, yes. decided they'd go on a romantic holiday to Australia with this killer who's already killer? killed five people. Yeah, but she didn't know he was the killer at the oh, time. I see, right. But then she realised he was the killer, but the minute she realised, unfortunately, she was being held underneath the water in Loch Ness, yes. about to die. Yeah. And then her mother came along with, with a very sort of feeble little stick, you know, like a, a night stick that, cop, that cops carry oh, around, yeah. that, you know, that pulls out in three sections. OK, well, like a truncheon. Well, it's not even a truncheon. It's like a stick, honestly. Okay. It's, it's like it's like um, it's like an old-fashioned car aerial. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So she smacks him <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, so she smacks this him over the head with an aerial. Yeah, that's right. She wades into Loch Ness with this aerial. Yeah. Smacks him over the head once, and and he leaps about twenty feet backwards into the depths of the loch. Right. Turns over. So he's drowned then. Well, he disappears. Disappears? He, he just disappears. Perhaps he's in a coma. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, the water has taken him, so oh, to okay. speak. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, Even though it's very still. And, well, yeah, but he's never seen again. That's right. it. I mean, you know, maybe the monster got him or something like that. Yeah. But it was all a bit sort of unbelievable towards the end. It sounds a bit unbelievable, However, yeah. Gianna Lumley... I've seen the time. Um, ...presented the Dalai Lama with a remote-controlled drone. Um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> For some unknown reason, right? And uh, and he said thanks very much. Cruel, yeah. Was that a BBC show? That was uh, ITV. They might have to ask for it back now. Yeah, that was ITV. I think it's a, a, a retrieval of some money. And they talked about reincarnation. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Has he has he been reincarnated then, Dalai Lama? Well, I think that's uh, isn't that a basic tenet of uh, Tibet Buddhism? Uh, probably reincarnation. Yeah. yeah. I think it is. Yeah, I don't, I've never heard him speak about it. Oh, okay. This is Talk Sport. That okay. was Porky Vision. Yeah, it was. Yeah. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up in the next hour. We're going to do listography and we're going to do uh, not only who should play us in a film, yep. uh, I'm assuming it might be two separate films, yes. uh, but also the three episodes of our lives that would have to be part of that particular movie. Yeah, OK. Uh, hopefully uh, they will be uh, family show oriented as oh, well. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, James says this I only watched the first episode of The Lock and realised that's how it would pan out. Mm. I must also be smarter than the average bear. Yeah, you must be, honestly, because uh, all the twists and turns in it left a lot of people, including myself, kind of. Puzzled, and then you just have to go with the flow and see what happens next. Yes. You know what I mean? Do you get the sense with a lot of these shows, particularly mm. the sort of detective based ones, yeah. that there's people just trying to make it more complex for the sake of it? Yeah, I do. So that almost everybody at one point in the show is a suspect. Well, well, not only that, but I think they want to make it so complicated that nobody can guess how the ending's going to yeah. come a- around, and yeah. then they want to make a spectacular ending. Mm. But unfortunately, I think it works the other way. I think when they make the, complicate, the, the ending so complicated, and suddenly the you know the villain is a minor uh, character, as it was in the lock, as it was in the last edition of uh, Broadchurch, mm. uh, the last uh, sorry series of Broadchurch. I think it wrecks the whole thing. Yeah, Scott I think says, we want to know that one of them there, you know, is the villain. Yeah, but, but you don't want to know from the beginning all the way through. No, to the end. but you want to know at the end that yeah, I was right after all. I suspected mm. him all along, not yeah. some anonymous character that you'd forgotten about after episode one. Yeah, yeah. Scott says, does this bloke in the lock have a selective coma? Yeah, selective coma. I like uh, that. Yeah, Lizzie backs yeah. you up. She says it is finished here. Um, yeah. uh, criminal minds clears up crimes all the time. Yes, mm. your criminal minds. Yeah, uh, some you see uh, line of duty like gets rid of some of the top characters halfway through the show. They get the, killed the off. Series. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, which is really good. Yeah, well, it's good if you as long yeah. as you didn't think they were the ones that did it. Well, that's uh, right. Muso says some bits of episode six of the Lock look like Taggart meets Carry On. I thought the younger policeman was the killer. 
He had a funny look about him. Yeah, well, yeah, he could have been a suspect. I totally agree. Yeah. Could have been a suspect, but uh, no, it was it was somebody anonymous. Swampy says, MG, yeah. make him stop. <laughs> <laughs> make him stop, yeah. And Stephen says, well, if Becky, who just tweeted, hasn't seen the last episode, it is bloody pointless now. Yeah. Hashtag L Planky of the spoiler. Well, no, no, not at all. She can make her you own. You just inter- told her what how it finishes. She can make her own interpretation of it. I've got I've got not a problem with that at all. Yeah. And uh, and she will. I'm sure. A very bright lady. I think mm. she's a doctor. In fact, isn't she? Uh, she is indeed. Becky. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people have asked why you haven't ever done Love Island. Maybe you should do that one weekend. Love Island. Yeah. Well, I saw about four. I saw about four minutes of that. Yeah. And I worked out it's a bunch of young people who are not particularly unintelligent. They seem to be able to have decent conversations with each other. Uh-huh. But, you know, it's, it, uh, the reason I don't encourage those shows is, is because it, it, it gives the message to young people that you only need a few hours on television and yeah. you suddenly become a superstar and your life yeah, is made. Yeah, I think they know that, don't they? Well, yeah, but their lives aren't made, are they? It, it, it'll all, this bubble will burst. Reality TV bubble will burst in right. about 18 months' time. Well, your mate Ben Frow won't want it to burst. Well, Ben he? Frow doesn't want he it to burst. He thinks it's the future. He, well, he, yes, he, he, yeah, but Ben Frow probably thought he was the future once, if you yeah. know what I mean. And then, it's you know, an, a quote from somebody, that, isn't it? That you, well, you were once the future. That was David Cameron. It was, yeah. You were, it was in the comments when he said of uh, Tony Blair... No, he said of... Who was his... Uh, yeah, he said of Ed Miliband, yeah. you were the future once. Yeah. No, he didn't. He said it of yeah, he said of Tony Blair, I'm sure. You, you were the future once. Yeah. Uh, and then when he left, actually, he turned on himself. He was uh, self-deprecating was and he? said, after all, I was the future once. Yes. Yeah, he's pretty good like I that. I may have to look it up. Yeah. I don't think you like David Cameron. Uh, I don't like David Cameron. Uh, I don't dislike David Cameron. Uh, he's a member of the, you know, the aristocracy and the upper classes and a fine English gentleman. But he was a shocking prime minister. Smashed Libya to pieces. And look at the consequences of that for the whole of the world, uh, right? Yeah. And, uh, and frankly, um, just simply tried to, in my view, inst- instill any policy into his uh, agenda that he thought would make him popular with the British people. Oh, I tell you what, let's raise the minimum yeah. wage, which was, you know, damaging for small businesses in this country. Oh, I know, let's introduce, uh, you know, uh, more and more charges, uh, green taxes, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Very damaging, again, to the economy. But he thought it'd make him popular with people who didn't used to vote for him. Whereas instead of endorsing and, and, and building the basis upon which those who did vote for him wanted to vote for him, he thought, oh, no, I'll, uh, I'll kowtow to a few of the opposition. Yeah, I'll tell you what's interesting, though, is yeah. uh, I've just found the quote. It is, in fact, it was said by David Cameron to Tony Blair. Yes. You were the future once. That's but right. I'll tell you what. So I got Cam- that absolutely seeing, right. Uh, well, you did eventually. Mm. Seeing Cameron uh, with David Davis sitting behind him and Tony Blair with Gordon Brown sitting behind him does make you yearn for a, a, another period of politics when the people involved in it were a little bit more interesting and but, better. I know David Davis is still there. Yeah. But, I mean, the other three aren't. No, they're not. No, that's right. And whatever yeah. you may say about Blair and Brown, mm. at least they had something, you know, which was actually successful and something that happened rather than what we've got at the moment. There's yeah. a lot of dithering around. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, well, look, um, you know, Blair won three successive elections or with, you know, very which big majorities. No, which no other post-war um, uh, prime minister from Labour Party has ever done. Exactly. Mr. Thatcher did for the Tories. Mm. But, uh, well, I don't think any, any Labour politicians done it in history. So he's very successful. But then... Like all politicians, and this is getting rather tedious now, it is. Uh, all politicians, they go and ruin their own legacy by their post-office behaviour, yes. do you see what I mean? No, I'd rather talk about Pontins, actually. Yeah, so would I. Because uh, I've got a great story here which you will like. On the eve yeah. of yeah. the uh, Open kicking off at Royal Birkdale, yes. and you may even know this Pontins quite right, well, cool. because there's an amateur... Uh, who's uh, goes by the name of Alfie Plant. Alfie Plant, yeah. Um, and he's going to be somebody to keep your eyes on over the course of the next few days, yes. right? Uh, because he's got a team Alfie of uh, uh, loaded sort of cheerleaders coming oh, yeah. up with him. Yeah. Uh, he's from uh, Essex, I believe. Mm. And because uh, accommodation is so scarce in Southport, yes. uh, all of his supporters are staying in the local Pontins. Uh, and there's a quote from a guy here mm. saying, it's the open by day and Shirley Bassey tributes by night. Is the Pontins at Blackpool? Uh, well, I think it's Southport. Uh, Southport. Yeah. There's one. There's definitely one at Blackpool because I remember well, when we did the open there. There was a Pontins, yeah. uh, Fred Pontins yeah. camp. It doesn't say specifically. Uh, it's nearby. Is all they'll say. Well, so. I think I've, I, I bet you that'll be the Blackpool one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, this guy, a plant, is from Bexley Heath. 
uh, mm. which of course is not far from here. That's right. Just to the south side of, yep. uh, of the A2. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, his mother is a Royal Mail worker. Father Darren is a former cobbler. Yeah. Younger ba- the brother Albert is his caddy for the week. Yes. Um, and basically his nickname is going to be Bert on the bag. Mm. Um, but he's going to be followed around by his kind of his own little Arnie, Arnie's army. Yeah, really, which yeah. Which be quite exciting, I think. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Apparently uh, Arnold Palmer won that Birkdale in 1961 yes. with one of the greatest ever golf shots, which came out of a dam and bush. Oh, really? Did you know that? Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and there's a plaque actually on Is the Bert course. Is not also the place where Justin Rose chipped in when he was very, very young and he was still an amateur? Uh, when he did it on the 18th? He finished fourth. Yeah. He finished fourth. And I think I think, I think, think that was Birkdale. That was Birkdale. Apparently, Birkdale has uh, a record of uh, great amateurs performing. Yeah. Is there only one amateur ever allowed in, in Oh, the... no, I think there's more than one. More than one, is there? Yeah, okay. But, I mean, they have to qualify. Yes, um, Alfie, indeed. And Alfie Plant is certainly one of them. So yeah. look out for uh, for Team Alfie flags. Yeah, absolutely. And look out for Team Alfie members of the uh, of the supporters club. That's right. And also, I think I'm right in saying that nobody um, British has ever won at Birkdale. Never won the Open at Birkdale. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. you could possibly be right there. Mm. Have you noticed, by the way, uh, during the day today and on our internal monitors here tonight, OJ Simpson's trying to get himself out of jail? Yes, indeed. Uh, he's been in there quite a long time, though, hasn't he? Well, not as long as I thought he would have been, because, of course, he got off famously with the 1994 murders of uh, his ex-wife, yes. who was Nicole Brown. That's right. And her friend, Ron Goldman, mm. uh, both of which nearly had their heads cut off, yes, severed with a murder. huge knife. Yeah. Absolutely horrible murder. And uh, despite overwhelming evidence, which insinu- you know, which um, Put him implicated, in the frame. Yeah. implicated him as the killer and yeah. the famous car chase and all that, yeah. he got off. Uh, and Largely so- because of the gloves. Yes, that's right. And interestingly, I was only listening just uh, a few, maybe a few weeks ago, yeah. to a sort of documentary about it. I mean, yes. we know that there have been all those uh, TV documentaries done, which are very good. Yeah. Uh, but the whole business of the of the arthritis in the hands mm. and the fact that he, uh, the reason he couldn't get his hands into the yeah. gloves yeah. was because his lawyer had mm. told him, whatever you do, don't take the medication that means that your hands are now supple. Because yes. being a former sportsman, yeah. his hands were completely sort of screwed That's right, by yeah. arthritis. So yeah. because he hadn't taken the medication, yeah. his hands were like sort of claws. That's right. And so he couldn't get them into the gloves. Couldn't get them in the gloves. Despite the fact that he was found innocent, in 1997, uh, the family of uh, both the victims took out a lawsuit against him, and the judge said, yeah, you are guilty, £26 million compensation to the families. Right. Uh, but the... Uh, but they could never prove it in a criminal no, court. No, no. But, as you know, in civil courts, the the probability factor is introduced. The burden of proof is yeah, different, yeah. Yeah, that's right. But well, they never found anybody who was supposedly responsible for doing it criminally, did they? No, they didn't, so no. Nobody's ever been prosecuted for the crime. No, that's right. So but if he didn't do it, who did do it? No, the police said, we're, we're not looking for anybody else. Yeah. But then, having got away with that, you'd have thought he'd kept his nose clean for the rest of his life. And then in 2007... Well, no. Sorry? <laughs> that's right, this is when he did the robbery, right? Well, in 2007, he suddenly got into his head that somebody had stolen all his memorabilia. So he went to reclaim it yeah. as an exhibition, but he took a gun with him. And uh, and it was listed as a, it was in a casino, wasn't it? It, in it, it, it was in a casino. He, that's why he's in jail in Nevada. Uh, and he uh, he wanted it back. He kept people hostage, right? Uh, at gunpoint, yeah. demanded the... Uh, the uh, <laughs> well, he's obviously gone mad yeah, He's gone mad. He, he then acquired all the memorabilia, which didn't belong to him anyway, right? And uh, I made off with it. He was captured and given 33 years. Mm. Uh, that was 2007. What right. is it now? So, I mean, so he's done. He's, so he's done, done 10, ten years, yeah. and he's now applying for parole. So I suppose he served a third of his sentence then. Well, it's not even a third, is it? Next year would be a third. Yeah, but he may have been in. He was yeah. probably in. He was probably in, in, in custody, uh, yeah. custody for a little bit yeah. before that. Yeah, exactly. Strange character. Oh, I mean, one of the one of the strangest characters ever. To, I mean, when you think about it, you know, one of the greatest ever American footballers certainly was. Who then became a celebrity actor, didn't he? Was he? In, in films a lot of like good, Naked uh, Gun and yeah, all that. Yeah, he did yeah. very well in those. Yeah, he was. Quite funny, actually. He was funny. You I know, agree. He had yeah. a sort of certain comedic timing. Yes, that's right. Which uh, served him uh, hopefully well when he was in prison. But yeah. I don't know if they're going to let him out. But we'll bring you more on that. Uh, we may have a guest on that actually <laughs> coming up later. In yeah, the week. and apparently he already has offers from TV companies to revive his acting career. Really? He gets out. Yeah. How bizarre. Yeah. This is Talk Sport. We are of the two mics. We've yep. got loads more coming up, including listography in the next hour. Yeah. 
Talk Sport, we are the two mics. William says Porky should be given an award for even trying to explain that plot. Uh, I think he's talking about the lock. Yes. Uh, and one from Wilco who says, I have a 100% success rate at spotting the murderers when watching Columbo reruns. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the trouble is when you're watching Columbo reruns, yes. um, you might get thrown by the fact that your memory's playing up mm. and you might think you remember exactly who did it. But yeah. if you get it wrong on the rerun, then you know you're in a bad place. Oh, yeah, of course you are. I know who the murderer is. Well, look, the, uh, Columbo was yeah. a very unique... TV series it was. that showed you the murderer at the start of the show. Yeah. In every Columbo episode, right. you saw the actual crime taking place. So you always knew. But what was fascinating... Was how was, he got there, Yeah, but what, but what was also fascinating was that the minute Columbo arrived on the scene, yeah. if there were 12 suspects, he mm. knew exactly who the killer was. Yeah. And then you just waited for him to track him down. Right. It, it was, or and her. It was, and it or was her. the way he did it that was interesting. It was it was a brilliant, brilliant show. And, uh, and he was a brilliant actor, old Peter Falk. Mm. One-eyed Peter Falk. Indeed. And, with uh, the raincoat. With the raincoat and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Now, now talking about tracking yeah. things down, I just yeah. thought I'd draw your attention to this mm. uh, in case you're thinking of going anywhere this summer. Yes. Because you did mention to me that when I'm uh, disappearing off for a week in August, yeah. you might do something similar. Um, if you go to Gatwick, yeah. be careful which company you use to park your car. Because oh, it's an amazing story. 100, 120 vehicles mm. uh, sort of basically went missing yeah. when this Gatwick uh, parking company went bust. Yes. They're all found in places like Sussex, Surrey. They were parked in fields all over the place. Parked in fields. Yeah. I mean, people just didn't even know where their where cars could be found. Weeds growing up into yeah. their bon- into their engines and all that kind and of stuff. And if you think about it, actually, yeah. when you do park, because I've only once, I think, parked in one of these long-term, outside-of-the-airport-type places. Yes. Yeah, where well, you hand your car over yeah. to somebody. And you assume that it's going to be there, yes. but you have no idea where it ends up. No. And so if they did go bust, mm. you wouldn't know where to start looking for it. Because what you're saying is they might take them to a much cheaper site for the 10 yeah. days you're away and only well, bring it back do. on the last day. Yeah, because they haven't got yeah. enough room. That's right. Where the actual office is. There's That's a couple right. of places. You know, on uh, Heathrow, actually, is where it happened to me. Yes. Um, you know that sort of approach road of the A4? Yes. And you pass a whole load of these places. You do. But they've only got one small little car park. Mm. So they obviously take them somewhere. Of course they do, yeah. But also, the other thing is you don't know whether they're using the car while you're away. Well, th- anything could happen, and yeah. that's why I would never park mine anywhere except the official long-term yeah. car park at Heathrow, who've yeah. never lost a car, by the way. Mm. I-, I found that out one time, and I came back, and I couldn't find my car. Oh, yeah. And so I went to them. I said, I think my car must have been stolen. Yeah. And they said, we've never lost a car. I said, As I, you marked down the space wrongly or something? Uh, I don't know. I just I did completely... Uh, it was a multi-story. Mm. And I was completely... Um, Discombobulated, discombobulated, for word, and I didn't have a clue. Right. So it was actually short term. That's what I remember now. Okay. It was short term, but I'd been away a long time. Yes. So it was about eight days at short so term. So that must have cost a few. Bob. It cost a, an awful lot of money, and I can't. So how did they locate it then? Uh, they just scoured the place and mm. found it. I went home because right. I said it's not here, right. and, and then they scoured the place. So you'd they, just forgotten where you'd parked. I just forgotten where I parked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but I said I've walked every row of every level of yeah. this car park. My, right. It's gone. I said it's been stolen. It must have been stolen. Right. And. Uh, uh, I told you that story about Don Mackay when uh, I had to, I had my car yeah. broken into in Cardiff Yes, because I parked it in the local railway station car right. park yeah. and had to go for lunch somewhere. Right, Left it there overnight because mm. I wasn't in a fit state to drive. No. It. Went back to get it in the morning yeah. to drive back to London. Yeah. And somebody had smashed the back window, yeah. stolen my golf clubs, a load of clothes out the back no. of the car. And so I took the car to his place and yes. I said, look, I'm going to have to take your car yeah. because this one's knackered and it needs to have the back window fixed. Mm. So we all had company cars, right? Yes. So he said, OK, well, he gave me his keys. He said, mine's a, it's a Ford Mondeo, and it's in the car park over there yeah. on level five. Right. And I went, OK, that's fine. So I walk over there mm. and get to level five, mm. um, no sign of this car. Mm. And I'm sort of flicking the, the keys, you know, yeah. to see if it's going to right. yeah. come on and all this. Yeah. I then notice... Jason Bourne style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I then notice... Uh, that on the wall of every one of the like, the, the, the different levels yes. is a five mile an hour sign. Yes, exactly. And the idiot Mackay yeah. had parked the car somewhere, yeah. looked at that sign and assumed and it was on, on level five. five. Yeah. So but, we eventually found the car, yeah. but it wasn't on level no, five. No, that, that's the that's the ramblings of an idiot. Yes. To mistake a five mile an hour sign, <laughs> which appears on almost every property now that's yeah. got a driveway. Yeah. Uh, in fact, a car that came to pick me up the other morning mm. when we were doing Sky TV oh, yeah. was parked 300 yards down the road. Right. Buy a um, a retirement home complex, oh, yeah. which had that five there. Okay. Because my address has a number five in it. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. So what? You thought that was number five? Yeah. It was his name Don McKay? No, no, oh. but he was an idiot. Now listen, I want to talk to you about uh, a cultural uh, revolution, which you will be very aware of. Okay. okay. Yes. Do you know what Bucky is? Bucky. Yes. Oh, well, as in Buckfast. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Bucky. Uh, 
And I've drunk, and, not only that, but I've actually drunk it. You've drunk it, I yeah. I did it as an experiment on the radio once. Right, OK. Mm. And it's very popular with the street people of Glasgow, the is Neds. that right? Yeah, well, it's very popular with what we call Neds. Neds. Uh, Neds is a sort of short form of uh, the word yob. It's yeah. a, a Scottish version. Yeah, OK. It's not, I think it means not in education or uh, something else. Right, well, uh, if you look up Buckfast, um, you know, on uh, sort of social media and all that, yeah. unfortunately it has a controversial reputation because of its repeated links with drunken and violent crime and anti Social behaviour. That's true. You say that's true? That is true. Right. But it's made by monks down in the southwest of England. Well, I'm about to tell you this. Yeah. However, um, sales of Buckfast, which is described as fortified tonic wine. That's what it is. So it tastes like sherry then? A little bit, yeah. yeah okay. I mean, it's got that kind of warm afterglow. Warm afterglow, that okay. You get yeah. from sherry. Yeah, are now surging mm. after a campaign by its uh, manufacturers to broaden its appeal. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is now being sold as the latest and greatest um, uh, version of a cocktail and how it can be drunk to complement certain foods. Yeah. See, what's very good about the people that make Buckfast, even yeah. though they are supposedly these kind of very... They're um, monks. ...ordinary people, very... Uh, no, they're, they're monks. No, I know they are, yeah. but they're not supposed to be particularly avaricious. Mm. They're not supposed to be particularly interested in making money. Yeah. But they have an incredibly good PR outfit, because this is exactly the same story that happens every year, when right. they say, oh, no, it's no longer the drink of the Neds. No. Actually, it's going to become yeah. the drink of the middle classes. Got the and, it never, and it never changes, because it was very, very similar story. Really? To which I, and I noticed when I was on Talk 107, so you're yeah. talking about maybe 10 years ago. Yes. And I said, I'm going to get some of this stuff and I'm going to drink it on the air yeah, and, see, and what see what it's like. Yes. And I did actually get quite bladderated because it's quite strong. Yeah, right, OK. Mm. Well, the highest sales of Bucky, uh, which is made by Benedictine monks yes. at Buckfast Abbey in Devon, yes. are still in Glasgow and surrounding areas. Mm. However... According to a report in the highly respected Grocer, yes. the magazine that turned you down. Indeed. Yeah, that's I was right. shortlisted for the job, though. You're shortlisted for the job, yeah. You uh, you actually keep reading the magazine, though, because I've seen... Yeah. This is not the first story you've picked out. The exactly, grocer. exactly. Demand is spreading in the south of England, sales growing by around £2 million mm. or... 8% yes. to a total of £26.9 million in the past year. Yeah. Right? It has now broken into the Grocer Magazine's league table of best-selling alcoholic brands for the first time. Really? Even though it is lodged at 91st place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so now it's becoming the in-drink. Yeah, but it's not, though, is it? Bucky. Oh, do you know anybody that drinks it? Well, I don't, but I mean, I, I you know, I don't oh, mix gonna... with street people in Glasgow, do I? Oh, no, you were going to say, you were about to say, I don't mix with the uh, the trendies. No, no, no all just... the trendies. Well, don't no, mix but the, the trend, trendies either. It's supposed to be becoming a trendy drink. Yeah, well, that's right, yeah. But, but they, say this, they say this every year. Yeah, is that right? And it's never, ever going to be a trendy drink, because it's actually not very nice. Uh, well, it says here, according to the highly respected grocer in one of their editorials, yeah. uh-huh. Bockfast is shaking off its controversial reputation. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. have you ever read The Grocer? No. Uh, the Grocer is basically a trade magazine. Oh, so I know that, yeah. Never write oh, I have read bad. The Grocer. It's one of my journals. Oh, I do read it. Yeah. Oh, so when you said you didn't read it, yeah. that was a lie. No, 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 it's not a lie. The point <laughs> is, I thought you meant, do I sort of, you know, subscribe to it weekly? Do no. you subscribe to The no, Grocer? No, but I have reports from The Grocer, which are relevant, yes. Oh, OK. How yes. often do you say you get one? About uh, once a month? No, no, about once every ten I days. I believe it's a monthly uh, magazine. Yeah, but I get one about once every ten days. They so have an online get... service as well. Yeah, online yes, Grocer? Yes, yes. Is that what you do? Yes, yes, yes. I didn't realise you've read things online. Oh, yes, yes, I do. Oh, okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, well, you will know from what you've read in The Grocer that they mm. very rarely write anything negative. Yeah. Because it's what's known as a trade magazine. Don't you? So th- everything's marvellous. Don't you think that if they're going to change it, make it trendy, that actually the traditional look of a bottle of a buck fast, yes. which is a red fortified wine uh-huh. with a glaringly yellow label, yes. which says buck fast in red, yes. and shows, like, uh, grapes and damsons on mm. the front, mm. should be changed. To something more, rather what more trendy. Mean, well, you think they, they, you're saying that or somebody else is saying no, that? No, I'm saying that. Yeah. I'm saying you well, want to make, make it trendy. It, you could make it a bit more modern looking, I suppose. But yeah. I think the point for the monks is that they make it trying to make it look sort of traditional. Yes. But this is the thing. I mean, they are mm. responsible for an awful lot of the uh, um, alcoholics in Glasgow. Yeah, they are. Because they sit there. I mean, it's like Thunderbird that they used to drink in America. That's right. Thunderbird fortified wine, mm. which was what all the bums used to drink who That's would right. be on the streets. Well, all the bums in Glasgow apparently have got a bottle of Bucky in their uh, well, pocket. Not, yeah, but it's not just Even them. Even if they can afford a coast. Yeah, it's not just them. Yeah. it's. I mean, you, if you go to tea in the park, there's mm. an awful lot of people, young teenage kids, drinking it. Yeah. Because it's relatively cheap. Well, that's disgusting. Graceful. It is a disgrace. Yeah. You should try it. I'll, get, I'll bring some in for you. No. I think you'd like it. No. I think you would. Don't bother. Coming up, Mark Donaldson's going to join us. Yeah. He'll know about it. Yeah. 
The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. La, 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 la. I'm indebted to Stevie, uh, who has pointed out uh, I was incorrect about Neds. It's not not in education. It's actually non-educated delinquents. Is what oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there'll be a few people from your past, I suppose, who are very, very well uh, informed about the use of Buckfast. Well, yeah? funnily enough, Mark Donaldson, who exactly. we're about to speak to from ESPN, although yeah. he's now uh, living high on the hog in Connecticut, yeah. US of A, uh, yeah. knows plenty, uh, I'm sure, about Buckfast. If we can ask him. Yeah. Mark, uh, we've just talked about Buckfast. Very good afternoon to you. Very good morning. <laughs> Good evening. I've got no idea what the time is either. <laughs> no, I know, but it's one of those weeks, I'm afraid. Oh, tell, tell me about it. Yeah, I just got in from the UK, now in the US, and I have to say that Buckfast has never touched my lips. Have you never had it? Do you remember? I don't know if you were at Talk 107 when I actually drank it on air. Uh, I did a morning oh, show. I remember that. And, and I was absolutely... Uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, I don't remember the third hour at all, to be honest, of the show. Um, <laughs> but it was actually not an unpleasant sort of um, uh, effect, I, was, I would say. Yeah, it's just it's not my taste. I'm sure people who um, like it, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't say too much about it having not tasted it, but it does have a, a, a kind of reputation as as something that um, some people drink, but not yeah. me. Well, what I was saying to Porky was that they've mm. got a great PR arm of the company because every year one of these stories gets pumped out that it's going to become the next big next thing. Next trendy drink. And it's not just going to be drunk by the Neds of Wester Hales and, uh, you know, the yeah. east side of Glasgow. That's, uh, that's it's actually, a... you know, somebody's going to start drinking in a cocktail bar in London. It never happens. No, absolutely, Mark. Here's a clue on how to make your next fortune. Just uh, get hold of our mate Peter Myers down in New York and get him to ship in about three container loads of Buckfast and then just go around with your delightful Scottish accent telling people, <laughs> this is the cocktail of Glasgow. Got it down your throat. Yeah, excellent. Now then, let's talk about more serious matters, like the Open <laughs> Golf Competition. Who's going to win this? Who's going to win it? Rory. No, it's not going to be Rory. No, it's going to be Fleetwood. No, no chance. Right? No chance. It's not going to be, it's not going to be Rory. Um, I'm not going to bet him now, because if you were going to bet him, you would have bet him three, four months ago, because that was, that was when he was at a decent price. I think he's into 25 to 1 now. Yeah. Uh, Rory... If I'm having a bet on Rory, I'm telling him to miss the car. Now, I've had a bit of a piece, quite rightly so, on Twitter for my predictions on this show. Yeah. Um, and usually the opposite happens to what I suggest, but I don't think Rory... Rory will, Rory's got a really good chance at Quail Hollow in the US because he's won there before. That's the next major. But mm. not this week. You need accuracy. Don't expect off the tee for most players this week, for most of the holes. Uh, I think Rory in a practice round didn't hit driver until 13 or 14. That's his strength. That's his strong point as well. So uh, if you want Rory, I'll take everybody else. OK. What about Tommy Fleetwood then, the local boy? Yeah, got a chance. Anybody that knows the course yeah. and the local knowledge. Now, just because I don't want to back him at 25 to 1, he was an attractive bet at 50 to 1. Before yeah. He I mean, he grew up around the corner. Used to walk to the course. What a story that would be if the local boy done good. But, oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a yeah. This is a this is a course in recent years. when Marco Mira won it in '98. The Americans have got a good record here. It's a bit like Tanusi for me. It's a bit, you've got to be accurate. If you're wayward, then you're going to be in trouble. You will get a chance to get it back. The rough isn't that bad, um, but you've got to be accurate off the tee. So don't be surprised if you see two irons and three irons and rescue clubs. Head off the tee. I don't think you'll see many drivers. Risking. And the weather is going to be a bit of a factor, I think, as well. Mm. I mean, we've had some really, I mean, albeit it's all been down in the south for the last day or two, uh, a lot of thunderstorms and quite heavy yeah. rain. There's some of that predicted, I think, for the first couple of days up there. Yeah, you need a bit of luck as well, because uh, with regards to the draw, I think early, late is going to be good. If you're out early tomorrow, um, before the bad weather comes in, I think Rory's out in the afternoon. He said he preferred an early tea time, and I think the forecast for for wind is to get up in the afternoon. So you do need, I mean, obviously the good golfers will, will come to the fore, excuse the pun, overall, but you do need a bit of luck when it comes to the draw. And I think if you're, if you're going to have a, a look at first-round leader in the betting, I think you look at someone who's, who's in the earlier starters rather than the afternoon starter. Mm-hmm. Now, an interesting story on the back page of one of the papers this morning, uh, and you'll know about this because I, I guess ESPN does a bit of golf as well as everything else that you guys cover. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the Royal and Ancient Chief Executive, Martin Slumbers, 
just to pour more kind of ordure onto the BBC, has come out and said that he believes that the uh, the BBC's coverage is tired and outdated. I mean, I don't know what you think of the coverage of, of, of golf in this country, but, I mean, it's not really um, designed to be anything but that, is it? <laughs> Sorry, we're losing you there. Try that again. It's an unnecessary comment to, to make. I mean, I don't know what the context was, if he's been asked specifically about the coverage or, or whatever. Um, I mean, it's, it's the whole journalistic code of, of kind of uh, professional conduct. You don't comment negatively about other organisations. And I've, I've never had an issue. I mean, Peter Alice a couple of times has, has kind of said things that he probably later regrets. But, I mean, a, a good friend of mine, Ailey Barber, is, is taking over from, from Hazel Irvin as the... The, the new host, and, and for me, she's one of the best up-and-coming broadcasters in, in Great Britain. So, um, I mean, she's you can't say that she's someone who's, who's kind of tired and stayed or, or whatever. She'll bring a freshness to it as well. Um, I've never had an issue with it. I love the fact that there are no ads going through it, but I think what's happened is, I mean, I, I was back in the UK, as you know, when I watched with my brother-in-law some coverage of Sky Sports and the the kind of zone with Andrew Coulthard practicing with uh, watching some of the golfers practice. That's a that's innovative from Sky Sports. So I think let's let's praise the likes of Sky for what they're doing as opposed to kind of needless negative comments. But w- what good is that going to do? What good can come from that comment that Martin Slumbers has made? Just let, mm. live and let live. Mm. Well, I mean, the BBC are a bit weak at the moment with all these money rounds going yeah. on. Maybe they'll take some notice <laughs> of it and move some people around. Yeah, I mean, it's a disgraceful situation, Mark, over here. You know, women are being sort of um, prejudicially uh, moved against at the BBC. Underpaid. Because underpaid, uh, terribly. I mean, you know, Emily Maitlis, a great woman, great lady and all that, she's not getting the bonds that her female colleagues are getting yeah. by Shocking. any stretch of the imagination. And some of those male colleagues, there's a guy, of course, again, the name of the guy in uh, Ireland... Uh, um, oh, Stephen Nolan. Stephen well, Nolan. was on his show. You yeah, I am, yeah, he, yeah. Well, how I'm much not, does he pay you? Well, not enough, because I'm not going on his show again, because <laughs> we just worked out he gets about half a million quid a year. That's so right. unless they're on, you know, offering like a couple of grand a time, that's me finished with him. <laughs> I'm telling you. i tell you what, this is, uh, this, this is tough tonight. First of all, it's butt fast. And then there was a grenade thrown in about the BBC. Yeah. And then there was a landmine thrown in about the women as well. So we yeah. to dodge the bullets here. Uh, <laughs> and hopefully we can get away with it. Yeah, we should exactly. point out that Mark, during the period of the Wimbledon fortnight, Mark yes. was doing some work for the BBC. Yes, so that's right. Yeah. Should be putting him on the spot. Like yeah, this. well, we're not putting him on the spot. It's a free world and all that. You know, Mark, I don't think any less of you. I don't regard you as a bucky bum just because you're working for the BBC <laughs> or anything like that. So... You haven't got a problem. No. Who who would you say is coming out of the US on the best form at the moment? Because I quite fancy Justin Rose uh, to do quite well this weekend. Yeah, I'll give you a couple of Americans that, that I like. I think Zach Johnson uh, has an opportunity that this week. Obviously won it a couple of years ago. Um, I, I think he's got a right chance. Brian Harmon is playing some really good golf. Kevin Kisner as well. Kisner's 150 to 1 and he was 50 to 1 for the US Open. He turns the price. So there's a lot of value to be had um, for some of these golfers uh, coming through. Obviously, you, if you're not looking at Americans, you've got the likes of John Rahm. Yeah. Uh, again, price is probably too short for a, a kid who I think he'll win a major one day, but um, I'm not sure it'll be this one because this is a real thinker's golf course. You can't just whack it and, and hope for the best. Mm. And Sergio Garcia's got a right chance. Thomas Peters, Brandon Grace. It's so open. There's so many that could win it. Um, Sergio Garcia's got the game to, to win an Open. I thought he would, if, if he was to win a major, I thought he'd, he'd win at the Open first. It wasn't. It was the Masters, and then mm. with the pressure off. Mm. Uh, he's another one this week. But just uh, not Rory. For me, uh, I'll take the field. Right, OK. Now, two football matches which might have come to your attention tonight, Mark. Celtic opened their European campaign with a resounding 4-0 victory over Linfield. Could have been difficult, according to Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, it could have been difficult. And and what will have uh, smashed your brain open as well, I'm afraid, being a Scotsman, is that England ladies beat the Scots ladies 6-0. 6-0. Mm. 6-0. Yeah, all right. 6-0. Yeah, calm down. 6-0. 6-0. I didn't notice a great big Mexican wave going around the stadium. So, uh, so what you got to say about that, pal? Well, beaten by the tournament favourites. So this is yet another grenade being thrown in. It's like a tag team YouTube. It's not one, it's, yeah. it's the other. Yeah. Um, 
Look, I was I was commentating tonight on the first game of the ICC. It was Roma against PSG, so I, I caught the fact that Celtic won. Yeah. And I think they've got Rosenberg next, which will be tough. I think they beat Van Dijk after mm-hmm. extra time. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's no excuses. Celtic have to be in the the group stage. They're budgeting for that. I think they'll get mm. to the group stages, uh, and I think it'll be a, a shot in the arm for Scottish football if they can get there. Yeah, and also, I mean, it's a huge contrast, isn't it, to the fortunes of uh, Rangers. It couldn't have been worse for uh, no, the Rangers course. fans tonight seeing that, that result, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, Bugfast, mm. then women, then yeah. the BBC, yeah. then Celtic, and yeah. now you're and Rangers. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, it's I bad mean, you, news. Are you want my Twitter account to explode after this? No, no, we just don't want you to be very popular in comparison to us, that's all. <laughs> well, no, you see, that would suggest, I mean, yeah. obviously the big problem you've got here, Mark, is trying to work out that there is some kind of strategy going mm. on. Now, you know well enough, having listened to this show for many years, there is absolutely no planning whatsoever <laughs> going into any of it. We don't have a strategy. Uh, I, I think you're taking advantage of the fact that my body clock, I don't know if it's New Year or New York, yeah. the words that are coming out of my mouth are just gibberish, not for the first time as well. Well, exactly, <laughs> what's new? I think you've done terribly well. Porky, yeah. on the other hand, is just about perking up. He's already been on the show for over two hours, mm. but he's only now actually woken up and decided that he might as well say something interesting. What are you talking about? <laughs> I opened the show with a very interesting... Oh, yeah. Here you are, Mark. I opened the show with a very interesting dialogue about the fact that 100 years ago today, the royal family changed its name from saxe coburg to Windsor. Why are you bringing this up again? Well, because Mark needs to know, particularly when the King of England found in his wardrobe two German uniforms because he was still the... Uh, the um, field marshal of a couple of German regiments, mm. so it wasn't good. wasn't good to be uh, Germanic in those days. No, indeed. Mm. So we're, news. We've got we've gone from we've gone from Rangers being knocked out of Europe to to that. Yes, yeah. I can I, see where I, you're I going. I don't know how to respond. No, yeah. No, well, no, he doesn't, no need. I don't think there's any need. Mark, thank you very much indeed. Mark yeah. Donaldson from ESPN there, yeah. uh, not wanting to comment on the German connection. No, exactly. uh, Amongst many other things. Exactly. I feel sorry for him now. I, I yeah. hope he doesn't feel as if we were putting it upon him. No, not uh, at all. Because no. it certainly wasn't. That was not the intention. No, no. It stretches uh, his intelligence, what there is of it. Now, coming up, I wish you'd stop insulting him, by the way. As well. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, now, right, apart yeah. from anything else, uh, coming up next, we've got listography. Uh, we've got a porky quiz to do tomorrow. Yes. Uh, which we will discuss uh, coming up uh, very shortly Don't as well. Don't need to. I think it's already sorted. You want to do it as a Trivial Pursuit It's a Trivial scenario. Pursuit quiz tomorrow. Have you got the box with you? It's a one in four. It'll be provided. And will the papers be sealed? Sealed, yep. yep. Sealed boxes? Yep, definitely. All right, yep. absolutely fine. Yep. Listography coming next. OK. <laughs> Talk sport. Uh, we are the two mics, and that music uh, tells us that it is listography and it's about the movie yes. business. Now, um, we've been asked by uh, the su- a suggestion came in from uh, one of our uh, one of our uh, tweeters a little bit earlier yeah. on. I think it and was who was Mark. it? Mark. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to double check right. that because yeah. I took the uh, uh, I took the, the screenshot of it. Uh, he was the one that suggested that we should do three uh, things that we would want to be part of yes. a movie about us. Okay, uh, it was from Wayne actually. Yes, uh, if they made a film of your lives, the top three moments w- that would have to be in it. Okay, and he's also asked who would play you. I'm not really sure who I would get, who I would want to play me. Well, to play me, it would maybe be... we should do it. Uh, maybe you should suggest who should play me, and I should suggest who should play well, you. Well, no, the guy who should play me is Eddie Redmayne. Why? Well, because he looks like I looked at that age. He doesn't look anything like you. Yeah, he does. No, he doesn't. No, he does. He's tall and sort of... Uh, he's got ginger hair. Yeah, I'm lanky, though. He's got ginger hair. No, but he's like, you don't just get somebody with ginger hair. Ah, no, no, no. I mean, you know, you're not exactly... A, he's a very sort of tall, lanky kind of guy. Yeah, well... So I don't think that would be the right thing to do. The person who should play you is the... You know the big fat guy who played Fred Flintstone? Um, John... Oh, uh, John Goodman? Yeah, he, he should play, play you. He could play me later. The problem is, when should I play was... You? But when I was when I was younger, actually, yes. I looked more like Eddie Redmayne than you did. Yeah, right. Well, I can't think of anybody who's got your sort of facial looks and uh, and of. Uh, That's because you haven't of, given any thought of normal build. You've just been thinking about yourself. I mean, you no. could be played by that guy Brian Blessed, couldn't you? Who's Brian got a Blessed? Beard? No, yeah. he's a he's a he's a rambunctious kind of character. Well, he's a loud mouthed. Um, 
uh, braggart, in exactly. my view. Yeah. Well, that's why he'd yeah. be good. He wouldn't no, have no, to do much no, acting. No, I'm not a braggart. No, really? No. All right. right. Well, why don't you start off with your first episode that okay. you would want to be included in the picture? OK, well, I'm thinking of the picture as a dramatic bi... Uh, what are we calling it? Biopic. Biopic is what yeah. a lot of people say. I or prefer a... biopic. Yeah, well, I'm going to say biopic, OK. And, right. and, and so you're looking at three key moments in your life that sort of made you what you are, OK? Yeah. So I remember this scene... Well, that's scene. not necessarily that. It's just three episodes of, that you'd want to put in there. Yeah, well, that, this is what I'm saying, because mm. I'm thinking of... Early life, you know, midlife, and then senior life, OK? So my early senior life... Senior life, I didn't realise you were in that. Well, soon to be. You've just admitted Appro- that now. No, no, approaching early middle age. OK. So my early one, mm. I remember having breakfast at home in Laurel Grove in Chester, yeah. OK? And there I am, just sitting there, and all of a sudden, my dad literally burst through the door. Yeah. And what had happened was he picked up the mail and got into the kitchen, opened it, yeah. and the mail said that I had won a free place... At the King School Chester. Oh, yeah. OK? Right. Now, this was enormous for two reasons. What, did you win in a raffle? No, I won it through taking the examination, the King School entrance. Well, so you passed an entrance exam. Yeah, entrance well, exam. you didn't win it then, did you? Yeah, yeah, I'd won a... Yeah, well, I'm going about to say to ah. you. So I'd take the entrance exam. Yeah. And the top 10% in the entrance exam got a scholarship. Mm. So it meant we didn't have to pay for well, my education anymore. even if you didn't anymore. want one. Sorry? Well, even if you didn't want one. Well, if you didn't want one, you'd turn it down. Some other kid would, lucky kid would right. get it, right? But you, so, surely you wouldn't apply for a scholarship unless you needed to. The scholarship meant that you got a, what's called, a free place. Yes, no, so, I get that. Yeah. But, I mean, surely you wouldn't normally be taking an entrance exam expecting to get a scholarship. No, you'd be trying to get a scholarship to relieve oh, okay. your parents of having to pay the fees. Oh, right. Because it was a fee-paying school. Yes. Was okay? it not means-tested then? Yes, it was means tested, yeah. and there were also assistants. For for instance, I ended up in a class with a the son of a bus driver, right, and the son of Cunard well, yeah. Shipping. Well, you would always be in the right in the same class, but I just yeah. wondered why you would be. You wouldn't be necessarily asking for a scholarship unless you didn't couldn't afford it. Well, it, it didn't. You didn't ask at all. Right. The top ten percent were automatically awarded a scholarship. Yeah. It was simple as that. Okay? Oh, okay, so I don't know why you're making this so complicated. Doesn't sound very fair. Well, well, I don't. I didn't invent the system. I was just the beneficiary no. of it. Okay, and it meant after passing the eleven plus, which mm. I'd already passed, because yes. you had to pass two exams. Uh, it meant that my father and mother were relieved of the enormous financial burden yes. of paying for me to go to the King School. They must be very pleased. Now, the King School was a brilliant school, and it shaped me into what I am today. And so I would want that shown dramatically in a film as, mm. you know, little Mike Parry sitting there eating his jam little on toast. Mike OK, yeah, that's right. right. Just munching through a bit of toast, uh-huh. a few cornflakes on the table. Yeah. And my dad suddenly bursting through, jumping yes. up and down and saying, you know, it's fantastic. You yeah, see yeah, this yeah, film yeah. as part of your yeah. kind of, you know, your, this, yeah. this great man. Yeah, yeah. And then we must do something about his early life that yeah. made him into such a great man. That's right, yeah, I that's do. That's what you see. I do, yeah. I see. So that would be my first one, OK? OK, all, all right. right. So what about yours? Uh, mine actually would be much more further forward than that, because oh, yeah. I'm not sure my childhood was particularly interesting, really. Right, and so mine was. Nothing, mm. uh, well, it wasn't really. I mean, yeah, nothing was. particularly yeah, anyway, interesting happened. So, I mean, if I was a film being made in my life, it would probably be more about the stuff that I would be likely to write about, which would mm. be kind of some interesting stories that I've been involved in. Yes. And one I could think of, just because it would make for quite a dramatic mm. piece of footage, yeah. uh, was the time after the um, Seoul Olympics, yes. when Ben Johnson was um, discovered to have been cheating. Right. And he was kicked out of the Olympics. Right. And he was flown back to the United States. And I, amongst uh, all the usual hacks, was mm. sent out to the airport mm-hmm. to find him. And he'd yes. flown into Kennedy. Yes. And, of course, he came out of Kennedy at a rate of knots because he was the fastest man in the world. Yeah. Ran to the side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. where he jumped into a cab mm. uh, and took off for LaGuardia because he was Canadian, I think, wasn't he, Ben Johnson? Yes, he was, And yeah. he had to get back to Canada. So he'd flown into Kennedy yes. and he was going to Canada from LaGuardia. Mm. So we all had to jump into cabs and chase him down the Van Wyck Expressway, right. which was very ironic and funny because yes. here he was the world's fastest man That's right. being chased by some of the slowest people you've ever seen move right, okay. in your life. Yes. And I just thought that might make quite an interesting piece of footage. Right, OK. Of, you know, the kind of crazy yeah, stuff we used yeah. to do. Yeah, sounds pretty... Uh, it's a lot yeah. more interesting than watching a you know, sort of red-headed yeah. child eating no, no. a piece of toast. No, no, sounds a bit repetitive, that, to me. We've really? seen lots of... Uh, yeah, but I'm well, getting what do you know dr- about films? You could write I'm getting into the drama stamp. of it. I'm getting the drama of it. All right, All's so, you're doing So is... you've moved on from uh, this yes. great scene yes. of a little boy with yeah. short trousers sitting at a, a manky old Abs- table in Chester right. yeah. eating a piece of toast. Yes. Are you going to get Ken Loach to direct it, are you? Yeah, Maybe you could do it in black and white. Yeah, yeah maybe, because it yeah. changed my life completely. You know, it was, a, it was the... If, 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 if existentialism is taking the right <laughs> direction from every mm. uh, junction that you come to, every crossroads in life... I don't think that is existentialism. That was, that was the first one. Now, the second one, right, yeah. the second one for me would yes. be uh, me staring 
you know, wistfully out of the window of an aircraft oh, right. as it's coming into JFK. Oh, right. And it's me arriving. See, that's a good scene. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's me arriving to it. on my first mission as uh, the Daily Express correspondent uh-huh. in the New York Bureau, yeah. which is the top appointment in Fleet Street is it? for a young man making his career in newspaper journalism. Uh-huh. It's not anymore, but it was in right. those days. It was the top job. Yes. All my friends left behind in London full of envy mm. and malice and spite against me. You know, I'm better <laughs> than you, I'm better than you, well, I'm better than that's you. That's what you kept telling them. No, no, that's what they kept trying to tell me. I and see. I said, yeah, well, I'm going and you're not. So, yes. you know, put that in your pipe and smoke it. OK. And, uh, Would you be supine in this, uh, in this scene? or would you be awake still? Or? No, no, I'd be awake. And, and, so and so you've been on a flight for seven hours and you're still all Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I'd be staring down at Manhattan because yeah. some of the flights actually do loop around Manhattan they and they go out to Kennedy. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I'd be staring down and, and, and in my eyes, the wonderment of thinking, wow, this is where I'm going to work, you know, for the next few years. OK. And anybody in our business who gets appointed to a job in New York... Mm. Turns out to have a great career. That's true. Almost, almost well, entirely. nearly everyone. Although nearly we, everyone. we should probably name the ones that didn't. Well, that yeah, would be bad. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that that would, that be, would right. be my next. Uh, if you see what I mean, building block to greatness. You yes. know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, mm-hmm. my next one would probably have to be in the war zone. The only war zone that I right. covered. I know you maybe covered a couple in your time as well. Yes. Uh, but it would be Bosnia. Colonel Bob Stewart, okay. uh, who was in the middle of central Bosnia when they discovered that yes. terrible, terrible scene of mm-hmm. Amici, yeah. uh, which was the village that was burned to the ground yeah. uh, by the Croat militia. Right. And you might remember the scene where he's walking in and out of the building yes. and shouting at uh, the locals yes. and saying, what on earth are you doing? Because mm. they'd killed loads of kids, basically. That's right. yeah. And there was all these kind of very small skulls yeah. piled up in the corner of a room yeah. because of this appalling, terrible atrocity that had been committed. Mm-hmm. And it was so bad because it had been committed right in the middle of Europe, mm-hmm. effectively. The yeah. European Union was meant to stop all that. They were yeah. supposed to say, oh, yeah, there'll never be another war in Europe. That's mm. what we've got the European Union for. Sure. But unfortunately, because they recognised Croatia yeah. and the UN followed suit, yes. that was why there was a war. Right. So, I mean, that would probably be quite a good film uh, piece as well. It would. I suppose, with the old helmet on yeah. and, the, you know, the flak jacket. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, with the blood type on it. I was O positive. Sure. In case anybody ever blew me up. Sure, very good, yeah. So that'd be quite good, I think. OK, now mm. my third one, yeah. and I, you know... Uh, a lot of people know a lot about my life, so I'm not going to repeat things like, you know, getting bombed in Libya or anything yeah. like that, you know what I mean, because people know about that. Yeah. I think the third one would have to be uh, me in a hospital attached to a heart machine keeping me oh, alive. Yeah. They'd have to have the drama of yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. You can see the drama. You can, mm. see the, you can see the hospital ward, yeah. a single room, yeah. and wired up You'd to the You'd have to be lying there like the guy in the lock in That's a right. coma. <laughs> That's right. you wake from the coma. That's right. And then, and then you see, the reason why that is so poignant yeah. is that, actually, that would have finished most people off. Yeah. You know, waiting seven months for a heart transplant. That would have really, you know, driven so many people into despair. Yes. And they would have given up our job and all that kind of stuff. And yet, and yet, as the credits were coming up, you know, it would say, you know... Dis- Join us next week for part no, no, two. No, 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 no. <laughs> it would say, despite this very serious illness, Mike Parry somehow recovered, uh, became a medical miracle and went on to practice another 20 years in top grade broadcasting journalism. Is that the end of the film? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. not a bad ending. Yeah, okay. I suppose I've yeah. had a tweet here from Steve the cabbie. Yes, uh, who sent this in as somebody who should play me. Uh, that's uh, Brad Pitt. It is. Yes, that's a probably. A that's bit, actually uh, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look, look too bad. bad yeah. No, uh, probably a little bit fanciful. I, we haven't got any time left, luckily, because my final uh, the scene that I think should definitely be included. Yes, is a scene that I don't wish to elaborate upon, uh, but it would be the night I spent in jail. Mm. That'll okay. be in the film. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well I'm not saying anything else. Let's not talk about that. Let's not. No, we're out of time. Okay, this is Talksport. Bye. <laughs> We are the two mics. Uh, here's one from Scott who says, The mystery of the white van in Stockbroker Belt, Surrey, could be solved. Maybe the owner used the Gatwick parking service. Yeah. Maybe that's how it ended up there. Yeah. Because you're be. not a million miles away from Gatwick, really, are you? Uh, it took me... I was down in Brighton today. Yeah. And it took me about... From my home in Stockbroker Belt, it takes 25 minutes to get to Gatwick mm. and a further 20 minutes to get onto Brighton. Yes. It's a lovely fast road. You wonder whether that's where they park the cars, though. Yeah. Uh, somebody has sent uh, in a suggestion. Del Boy, he calls himself, uh, mm. of Tim Timothy Spall could play you, which is not an a million yeah, miles away. Yeah, not he's, bad. He's a good actor. Not bad. And somebody suggested 
wanted Daniel Day Lewis for me, but he's retired, isn't he? Uh, well, he says he has. He's sixty years of age mm. now, so maybe as uh, somebody's uh, very uh, unkindly suggested uh, Danny DeVito oh, yeah. uh, to play me. That's a bit harsh. Yeah, I mean, I'm twice his size, and uh, somebody <laughs> says um, Charlie Drake. Charlie Drake, well. if you're still alive, mm. and then Wurzel Gummidge. Yes. So a lot of ridiculous yeah, shocking, um, sort of suggestions, which yeah. we take no notice of. Becky says, with Porky's newfound love and passion for women's football, mm. could you ask El Planco who won the WSL Spring Series? The WSL? I presume that's the Women's Soccer League. Women's Soccer League Spring Series? Right? Yeah, it's probably Arsenal, was it? Uh, it was Chelsea, apparently. Chelsea, uh, there you go, yeah. Well, why is it called the Women's Soccer League if uh, it's English? Well, is it American? Well, I don't know. Yeah, it must be. I'm must not be. sure. It must be. So. You're the expert. Oh, well, hang on. If Chelsea won, it can't be American, can no, it? No, that's what I mean. over there. Yeah. Um, here's yeah. one from Steve the Cabby. If you park at Heathrow now, it tells you where your car is parked when you put your ticket in the machine. Mm. Very clever stuff. Yeah, that is clever stuff, yeah. It's uh, like that new ruse to put the uh, registration number on your parking ticket oh, so yeah. you can't handle it to somebody else. I really else. object Absolutely to that. Absolutely disgusting. I totally object to You know, that. to trying to raise the human spirit of compassion and kindness and camaraderie amongst yeah. people, I think is disgusting. It is awful. And the people who do it should be given a lesson in, you know, community uh, relations, neighbourhood leanness and all that kind of stuff. It's terrible. Yeah, how about this picture of uh, of Jeremy Corbyn holding a bottle of Buckfast? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I that, don't know whether that's that a spoof a, picture. I don't know if it's genuine. You can't really tell. Yeah. It doesn't look like this kind of, it, it looks like he shouldn't be holding something that big. Yeah. The picture looks slightly yeah, adopted I, to I, me. I, I agree. It comes bo- in from Scottish Bull. The bottle looks very big, but yeah. then again, when you put a an object forward towards a camera, it does increase in size, believe it or not. That's true. Yeah, yeah. well, it's all about perspective it is yeah it is um and uh, how about this one from uh, from becky who says so summing up the porky film ginger kid who ate toast works in new york city and becomes a living medical miracle yes that sounds right. like a classic well it is that's not bad at all in my view yeah not bad at all well i mean good stories yeah absolutely yeah. good stories patrick says that bosnia story mg i was there serving with bob uh, i was his radio operator really a very bad time in history right it was yeah. an awful time i remember yeah. standing one night because the, um, uh, the, we used to sort of hang around in the sergeant's mess, yes. which was always nicer and more fun than the officer's mess. Yeah, exactly. Because the officer's mess was a bit too posh. Yes, that's whereas right. Whereas the sergeant's mess was like full of people smoking and yeah, drinking and, I know what you mean. and having a good time. And suddenly uh, there was a, bit, a bolt of lightning, I think. Mm. I haven't seen any tonight, by the way. Um, but it sounded like a, a shell. Yeah, well, it, it would. You know, in, in a war zone, yeah. when something flashes, you think yeah. that somebody's like like under zzz, attack. But also it sounded like, a, you know, how bullets going to go zzz, yes. like that. And, yeah. and all the lights went out mm. and everybody just hit the deck. Yeah, well, that's what you do. Because we thought we were under attack. Yeah. And you remember that kind of stuff. You do, but Amazing. you weren't under attack. It turned out it was just a, a lightning strike that had hit one of the posts right. of the camp. Okay. And everything, normal service was resumed okay. very shortly thereafter. Now, looks really Lizzie is clearly, you know, needs to be get back on the pills or something because she says, <laughs> worst porky vision ever. Really? I mean, what a ridiculous statement. See, I don't agree with that. There's been a lot worse than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's right, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Now then, one here as well. Uh, It says here, I haven't... This comes from my line. I haven't heard Porky slagging off his mate Jeremy Vine for being paid 700k by the BBC. Well, he may have missed the earlier part of the show where I was trying to extract uh, from you the amount of money that you get paid for appearing on Jeremy Vine. Yeah. The best we could get to was Mm. for you to say that basically you didn't know. No. You have no idea. No, no idea. And and by the way, I don't object to people getting large salaries. And in fact, we did actually say it last night in preparation for this report. We're all in favour of uh, presenters, broadcasters getting broad presenters loaded down getting, with money, getting paid lots and lots of money. Yes, because we are a very valuable resource in this country, and there's not many of us who do it as well as we do. Although uh, yeah. I think uh, the same might not be said for the people who do the BBC Breakfast Show. Yes, because a lot of the papers have, have picked up on the fact that Dan Walker, mm. uh, who is the guy that doesn't like to work Sundays. That's right. Because of his Christian faith. Yeah, which uh, you've which got to respect is, him for, uh, obviously. Entirely, well, I mean, up to a point, you have yeah. to respect him for it. Yeah. He gets paid more money, though, mm. uh, than the woman who sits on the same couch as him. That's right. Uh, who is Louise Minchin. He gets about double. Uh, he gets 250000 She tweeted out yeah. uh, a hashtag not on the list, mm. along with some of the other women at the That's BBC, right. yeah. uh, who get less than one hundred fifty grand. That's right, absolutely. So he is getting in excess of £100,000 more yeah. than her I know. to do the same job. Now, he's claiming Mm. That that's because I do another job, uh, and in fact, it I get a bit paid, of football. I do a bit of football, but I get paid the same as her for doing that job. Yes. But it's very unclear. Yes, I I'm mean, so... you'd have to say the Beeb have not handled <laughs> it me. terribly well. No, they haven't. It's ridiculous. And a lot of women are very unhappy. Well, they've hidden it away for so long that now they've been found out, haven't they? Yeah. Now, another one here. It says, uh, 
Porky, do they have the volume turned down when you're reviewing these TV shows, <laughs> quite possibly from under your table in Weatherspoons? That's a bit harsh. Very harsh mm. indeed, yes. Indeed. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, so we were going to talk about the uh, the Porky quiz, but you say it's going to be done uh, all uh, above board uh, on a board game. Yes. Basically. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing it, OK? That's going to happen. Uh, and the reason for that is, we do that one in every four, is A, to break the grip of the so-called independent quiz masters with whom you're... Uh, colluding on a weekly well, basis to incident. give me a rest from the corruption. Well, you remember there was an incident last week where the uh, yeah. the, the independent quiz masters were unavailable. That's right uh, for the Friday show. Yes, uh, or the Thursday, Thursday night, Friday morning show, I should yes. say. Uh, and the quiz was actually done on Sunday. That's right. Uh, on the open. Yeah. There, um, there was and, some kind of interference. And, and it gives us time to review how the show goes without the independent quiz masters. Uh-huh. And another set of independent assessors are looking at that now, I can okay. tell you. Well, it'll be on Facebook Live as well, so people can watch y- y- that. Yes, it will. Now then, uh, there's one here from Phil who says, I bet you pair would actually make a great film based on your lives. Mm. It would amount to bladderisation, rogerisation, and plenty of drama and fun. Well, yeah, you could sum it up a bit like that, I suppose. I think that probably would be very much yep. what it would be like. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I've got a, a story that I wanted to tell you, talking about Weatherspoons, but uh, yes. I don't know whether now that you're getting phoned by them on a regular basis yes. you'd wish to publicise this, but there was a story in the Daily Record mm. uh, about a rat uh, being filmed running about the Weatherspoons pub in Greenock, which is a bit unfair, really, because a lot of rats of around the country and almost every restaurant in the world has probably had some kind of a rodent problem. When you've got, like, over 900 pubs to look after, yeah. you know, you're going to have the odd problem here, there and everywhere, aren't you? And you are. You know, you, you get reports from uh, like that from restaurants all the time. Yes, you do. Yeah. But nevertheless, I mean, uh, these things do pop yep. up from time to time. Uh, yeah, well, well uh, you know, the, uh, the the thing about life is to get on with it, you know what I mean? It is. Right, now then... Uh, yeah, we've only got a few minutes left. Yes. Um, because uh, time is of the essence. Time is of the essence, mm. exactly. Mm. And uh, what we have to remind our audience about is that... What? The American mission is well underway. The American mission is well underway, and uh, the Two Mics experience, as it's become known, yes. uh, is available to sign up to. Uh, more and more people are doing it every day. Yep. Uh, all you do is you go to the twomics.co.uk, yep. uh, and you find uh, the way to do it. Is to, it's, I think it's four ninety nine, uh, basically, and you get a load of... $5.99? Uh, uh, well, like, that's with the VAT. Oh, is that? That's okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, no, it's, it's basically a, uh, a... You get to live stream the show when it's out. Yes. Uh, on the day itself, which is the September the 16th. Excellent. And also... So, of course, what you get to do uh, is you get to see a load of other video content which is going out even as we speak. Even as we speak. Yeah. Now then, tell us, please, what you are planning to do this Saturday evening. Uh, this Saturday evening, I don't really know because all I know is what that you, you don't really know. You well, do know. No, I don't. You do. I know. I'm coming to see uh, your exposition of the Porky Scratchings in some pub or other, right? No, but you're, I don't you're know joining in with me. It. You're helping me. Yeah, well, what I, yeah well, that's what I mean. But you have to tell me. What it is, though. It's a race night, I've right. told you. We well, yeah, but people haven't been told that. They have been told that. OK. That I have a poster that's been regularly going out all week for the last two weeks. Yeah, but there's a lot of people listening who don't see that. Twitter We're going to that. the Well House Inn, right? Right. It's down in deepest um, stockbroker belt. Yes. And it is a pub that was once regularly used by George Best. Oh, yeah. Whose home is actually just up behind it. And he used to walk over the hill and, okay. and, and come down and see us. Yeah. But, uh, so how does a racing bit work, then? Well, what happens is you you uh, you get this equipment right. and it's, uh, it's electronic I don't have to run against anyone, do I? No, 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 no. You don't understand. It's uh, it's simulated racing. Okay. You know, it's on the screen. What do you call it? Like um, computer screen. Computer screen. Yeah, yeah. And and you back a horse in each race. Uh-huh. And obviously, there's no skill involved no. because you know which horse is going to go for it. Okay. I would always bet on a horse that was running with uh, the jockey in blue silks, okay. obviously, or something like that. And I think there's about eight races. And it's all for charity, right? Yeah, it's all for charity. It's for children with cancer. Yeah. So it's for a very, very good cause. Yes. But I decided when I heard this night was going on mm. that I would personally back the night. Yes. And make it the Mike Porky Parry Scratchings sponsored race night. I see, good. Which is what it is, OK? okay. Yeah. So well, I'm still not absolutely sure what I'm supposed to be doing, though. Well, what you're going to do is... You what are, am I going to do? A, your presence will highlight the event. Right. And therefore, we hope more people will Do I need to wear a suit? No, not at all. No. You need to wear a shirt and slacks and slacks. walk around drinking beer, being nice to people. Okay. I know it's difficult in your case. That is not easy. In your no. case, exactly. <laughs> and uh, and generally, spread bonhomie yeah. and uh, maybe give a bit of a commentary on a race or two for okay. us. Okay, all right. And uh, maybe, you know, advise people on the next okay. race and that kind of stuff. And you put me in some hotel, have you? I've put you in a uh, an establishment nearby. Have you? Yes. Is it a nice hotel? It's a Premier Inn. A Premier Inn? Yeah, no, 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 no. Premier Inn, no. no. What have you put me in there for? 
Well, it's the nearest hotel, and you're only going to be there a few hours because really? the following day we have to get up and go and work in uh, in talk to what town well, that's is true, it? yeah. Because we're doing the warm-up. Well, it won't be particularly late night, will it? Uh, I think the last race is half ten. Is it? So you and know, when's the first race? Uh, half seven. Okay. Yes. All right. So is there dinner involved? Um, Should I eat beforehand? Well, we can sort all that out. Don't worry about that. You're always no. worrying about your stomach. That's well, your no, problem. I just don't want to go out yeah. on the on the, the terps all yeah. night without no, eating. No, 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 no. We'll sort that out. Staggering don't worry. about in stockbroker belt, Surrey, looking for a late night kebab. No, you won't be. Believe me. How um, do you know? Because uh, it's one of the best bar restaurants. Oh, so I'm going to eat there then? Yeah, of course. Okay. In uh, in Surrey. Well, yeah, that'll be good. So you'll have a problem there. Oh, well, you mean in the in the what's it called? What's the name of the pub? The Well the House. Well House Inn. So I'm eating there. It's got it's got a really large couple of bars okay. where you can have bar snacks, or yes. it's got a proper restaurant at the back, right. so you'll be well catered for. No, I'm sure I will. Yes, because I'm not like you. I can't go 24 hours without eating. Anything. No, well, I, I don't go 24 hours without eating. It'll, okay. be, a, it'll be a super uh, fun night. Excellent, and I'm looking forward to everybody coming down. Fine, yeah, uh, everybody is very welcome. Yeah, uh, it's called the Well House. Yeah, uh, I'll be there to keep Porky in order, of course. Yeah, uh, but uh, we've got some work to do before that. It's just south of Kingswood, by the way. Is it? Yes. Okay. How do you get there? Uh, by road. No, right. What's the nearest train station now? Oh, no, you can't get there by train. It's well, too far you, away. Well, nobody can drive there if they're going to go there for a night of blood or ration. You can, lo- a lot of local people come around. Yeah. They get lifts and taxis and Ubers and all that kind of stuff. However, if you wish to make a mission, you uh-huh. should go to Epsom Railway Station okay. and jump in a black cab outside yeah. and say, take me to the Well House Inn at Kingswood. OK. It's, n- it's not difficult. And that can be done. Yes. That should be good. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> we are the two mics. Completing another, you know, uh, Wepo Papo Bambi show. What? Look at the light! Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling, as fizzy as a bottle of champagne, podcast from the two mics. No New Year's Day to celebrate. No April shower. Go on. To see the flowers. No Easter egg. No Easter egg. To peg. My joy at your marital status with me. We are living in the Buckingham Palace. We have been at war with Germany for three years, but we still have the German name. (laughs) If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport. We have ways of making you like the royal family. (laughs) 